All right, so it is uh, Thursday, July 8th. Looks like we have everyone we need so far um, that I will call this meeting to order. And Stephanie, can we please give a call? Uh, Commissioner Ali. She's muted. Sorry, no, sorry. It just, it was lagging. It went to my phone for some reason. I'm present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Daniel? Commissioner uh, Dillard? Present. Commissioner Gathava? Present. Uh, Commissioner Harris? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Rivera? Here. Uh, Commissioner Sakalis? Here. And Commissioner Traore? Here. Thank you. Oh, and then from here, uh, so we missed the approval of meeting minutes from a few meetings on here. So we just want to ensure that we do that today, everyone. Um, so we do have in the agenda packet linked the meeting minutes from March 4th. So this was a meeting that not everyone was on the TRC for. So Stephanie, I just wanted to ask about protocol on that. So uh, that March 4th meeting with everyone on the current TRC not being in that meeting, is there anything we'd wanna do with that or push that for another meeting for approval? Um, I mean, you could do one motion to accept all meeting minutes. Um, it will stay on the agenda until at some point the commission approves them. Um, in the past with the Human Rights Commission, if there's members who weren't present, who um, are hesitant to approve the meeting minutes, the, the suggestion is that they can listen to the audio or the video if, if they wish to, to do that. That was a longer meeting. I, I think it went from about seven to a little before 1130, maybe even a little after. Um, so it, it's just comfort level, but like I, at, at some point there, they would need to be approved. Um, and, and so um, there, there's not a direct protocol. It's just kind of, you know, there, there is audio and video available um, if anybody want, wants to view the minutes and that would be for the public too, so. Um, I have one change to make to the June 8th minutes. Um, under the section review of draft RFP for facilitator, it says R Rivera requested for RFP to be updated to reflect Latinx and Hispanic and not white. Um, I think that was Commissioner Dillard, but I could be wrong about that. Okay, thank you. I can make that edit. Um, do we have any other current changes to any of the other minutes? And is there anyone hesitant to vote on approving the March 4th minutes? Okay. Um, so we did make the small change just now to the June 10th minutes. So I just wanted to ask as well, if we could hold off on approving those minutes until the next meeting with uh, Commissioner Daniel not being here uh, with us changing something and possibly attributing it to her. Uh, so and, she and, and, and just to keep things moving, I, I can go back and look at the video tomorrow. So okay. if, if you wanna, just approve the minute subject to a possible edit for the purposes of who made that particular statement. I, I think that would be okay. I, but if you wanna wait till your meeting um, in, a, in about a week and a half, that, that works too. But if you wanna keep it moving, um, that's easy enough for me to go back and listen to the audio, or watch the video. Okay, I'm okay with option one personally, but I uh, just would like to ask everyone else because uh, we need someone to make a motion as well. I make the motion to approve. I second it. 
Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to approve um, the meeting minutes then from March 4th, June 10th and June 24th, subject to the revision of the June 10th meeting that staff will go back and listen to audio slash video to um, attribute that statement to the correct commissioner. So with that, I will take roll call. Commissioner Ali? Yes. Commissioner uh, Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Sakawas? Yep. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion passes. Okay, next. We have public comment of items not on the agenda. So would just like to ask if we do have anyone from the public attending today that has any remarks that they would like to make. We will give you up to five minutes to make your remarks. And again, these are four items not on the agenda for tonight. So if you could please raise your hand and we will be sure to call on you and give you an opportunity to speak. It does not look like we have anyone for public comment of items not on the agenda. So we will now move on to item number four on the agenda, which is request for proposals update. And Stephanie just wanted to check in on this aspect to see if sure. we, oh yeah. Um, so the um, proposals are due um, by this Tuesday, July 13th at 2.30. And once um, the proposals are submitted, the purchasing division will uh, go through just to make sure that everybody submitted the um, proper uh, request as um, put forth in the RFP. At that time, there will be a scoring sheet that will be created and at least three members of the TRC um, will need to volunteer to, to score the proposals. And because the city requires um, a proposal to at least score at 80 for it to move forward, those proposals that are scored 80 or higher would then be um, contacted for, for an interview. So, so that's kind of the process. So the, um, the commission can choose to to hold a special meeting if you're wanting to, to, to kind of review um, those um, proposals that score 80 or above, or you could designate it to a subcommittee. But until Tuesday, well, I wouldn't even say Tuesday, I would probably give purchasing at least 24 hours to go through and make sure all the you know proper documents were um, received as part of the proposal. But we'll say 24, 48 hours later, um, getting those surveys out to those commissioners who are choosing to participate, excuse me, I call them surveys, evaluations, um, and getting those uh, graded to kind of move forward on next steps. Um, are we, or do you have any knowledge of how many proposals have been submitted yet? Sure, when, when I checked today, um, there had not been any, but I also know that as somebody who uh, works with uh, the public, the, you know, that people tend to wait till the last minute. I myself can raise my hand and say that I've probably done that myself. And so um, as of today, there have not been any submitted, but uh, again, people have until Tuesday at 2.30 to submit. So. Okay. And, and if um, there are no, Proposal submitted. The um, the TRC can choose to to rebid if you want to, or there there is a clause that uh, would allow you to kind of bypass um, that process and and do more of uh, what was done earlier um, in the year in terms of selecting a facilitator. So, um, but prior to Tuesday, I just don't I don't really know, and so kind of what options are available until we see what comes through by Tuesday at 2.30. Okay. 
In terms of personal position uh, on social medias to raise awareness, uh, is that something that's allowed or is there sure. um, language that we'd want to use to stay a little more neutral on it? Are you asking if I can ask the city to pump it out on social media? Uh, that for one, but also ourselves. Yeah, you certainly can. Um, I know it was shared on, um, we did a, city, a citywide news release. It was also released on the um, Office of Equity Human Rights news release listserv. I know that it also appeared on LinkedIn. So if anybody's on LinkedIn and wants to forward it, you can find it there. But I will uh, speak with the department that handles social media and ask them to, to shoot it out um, on um, whatever venues they feel appropriate. So. Thank you. Stephanie, I feel like I'm asking a question about open records um, at every meeting. Sorry about that. Um, but I wanted to ask if, say, one of us posted about um, TRC sort of business uh, or some something like this, say, on Instagram or Twitter, is that part of open record? That, as it relates to what you posted in relationship to the commission, that would be correct. Thank you. Some, somebody could say, I would request all posts that Commissioner Rivera did as it relates to the TRC. So any post that had been done as it relates to the TRC would be a public record. Great, thank you. And, and I can also, after the meeting, I can resend via email the news release. If folks would like me to do that, that's very easy to do. So I can resend out the actual news release too. Um, via email after the meeting this evening. I think that's a good idea. Does anyone have anything else about this RFP? All right. No. Okay. Move on. So we can move on to agenda item number five, which are the updates on the land acknowledgement. So I do want to give this one over to Commissioners Novus and Rivera. Hello. Um, yeah, so in terms of the land acknowledgement, uh, it's done. I don't know what else to say. Um, I sent it to uh, um, the, it's, it's in the drive uh, and I sent it to various people. Um, I don't know what the next steps are with that. So I guess somebody will have to tell me how that goes. So uh, yeah, it's in the agenda packet for today. Um, and I wanna thank again, Sakawas for, um, for submitting it. A couple of things that I just wanted to point out. Um, there's a typo in the word ancient. Um, and then um, just some discrepancies in when we, when um, indigenous people are used, if the people is capitalized um, in one instance it oh, is, yeah. in one instance it's, it's not. It should be indigenous peoples with a plural and capital P. Okay, so I would suggest um, correcting those. But otherwise, I really like it, and I think that it's ready for us to hopefully make a motion and approve after um, we get some more discussion. If anyone has any other comments, um, and maybe we should also open up to public comment. I'll make those corrections right now. What was the word ancient? You said ancient. Yeah. Okay. All right. Line five in the acknowledgement. Okay. Does anyone from the public have any um, comment on this acknowledgement? I'm seeing none. Do any other commissioners have any comments or discussion for this? 
I don't at the moment. Just wanted to ask if we did feel comfortable today uh, doing the vote to um, essentially, you know, put our support behind it and use it going forward ourselves, or if we were still waiting on um, Human Rights Commission and um, any other entity first. I wasn't able to get it in front of the eyes of anyone on the Human Rights Commission. Um, I could make the motion such that we approve the acknowledgement um, with the edits that we discussed um, uh, for immediate implementation at the very beginning of our next meeting, um, pending the approval from the Human Rights Commission at their next meeting um, as well. So if they, um, if they approve it as is, then um, it will formally adopt it as well. Stephanie, is there any problem with that? Uh, no, they, the Human Rights Commission meets on Tuesday, July 27th. So that's their next date. Um, I'm just curious, why are we getting um, their input on this? I was just going to ask if it mattered if they didn't want to do it, could we still vote to do it our, on our own and then let them decide if they want to do it? Sure. The, the um, reason that the Human Rights Commission is being brought up is um, the one of the former drafts of this was uh, developed in partnership with them. Um, and the way that we had intended to, the way that I had originally intended um, this to be used was for both of our commissions to adopt it um, in a sort of unified manner um, so that we can also sort of jointly recommend that city council adopt this. Um, oh, but see. if the commission wanted to say we should just have our own land acknowledgement and then the Human Rights Commission can um, can either use this one f f independently of us, um, then we can do that as well. Do you have a preference? No, I think that's great. I, ju I was just curious. I wanted to know the reasoning behind it. I think yeah. that if we work in solidarity with them, it's just stronger for stronger for that reason. And then it makes it um, more of a, an argument for the city to pick it up um, and actually use the word reparations, which is the reason why um, this is in here. Because um, I don't like the word reconciliation. Um, I'm from Canada, been there, done that. Reconciliation is not the way to um, make things better. We need equity and, and reparations. So um, I would really like this um, adopted by the city. And I think that working with the Human Rights Commission is the best way to do that. Thanks for those comments. Yeah, I would have to agree. I think, um, I think that, and I mean, I don't remember word for word what your motion you suggested just now was, but I, I would second it if you wanted to remake that motion. So Stephanie, I, did you catch I, it the first yeah, time? I, th I think so, yeah. So um, to approve the land acknowledgement with edits for immediate implementation at the next TRC meeting, uh, subject to the approval of the Human Rights Commission. Yeah, so I guess it would be for implementation um, for the meeting follow, for the TRC meeting following the next HRC meeting. Okay, I think that's August 5th, I believe is when that would be. Yeah. I also see this um, as a test, you know, to see how pe how serious people are about this work. Um, because I know the word reparation is um, a loaded word for a lot of people um, and it's not used often in land acknowledgements for that reason. So um, if it's denied, then um, that will be definitely something we'll have to talk about. Thank you. Yeah, Sakawas, can you um, send the edited version to Stephanie? And then Stephanie, would you be able to send that to the whoever organizes the agenda for the HRC and see if they'd be willing to add it to their agenda? Yes. Great. Um, it's in the drive and it's already edited, so it should be ready to go. Okay. So I, I the, can, the, the I hiccup can. with the city is that we are we can't access Google Drives. It's a, it's a security measure, and so I I would need it sent just to me directly. Please. I'll do that right now. Thank this you. This is Commissioner Ali. Yeah, I'll go in and send it to you right now as a PDF.
Thank you, team. Um, so I, I think that we've had my motion and then uh, Commissioner Ali's second. If there's, um, unless there's any other discussion, maybe we can get roll call. Okay. Um, Commissioner Ali? Yes. Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Sakawis? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, passes 8-0, thank you. I'll just conclude by saying that I'm, I'm, I feel really um, glad that we did this uh, with a unanimous vote. So I just wanna thank everyone for this. And again, thank you to Sakawis for being willing to um, do the work. You're welcome and thank you. Uh, Steph, do you mind giving me the ability to um, share my screen really quick? I just wanna make sure that I have the two corrections right because for some reason it's not showing me a history of uh, Sakawis making any changes. You should you should be able to. Okay, let's see. Um, share screen. I'll just resend what I have to you again. So it's just the ancient and then indigenous peoples that those two, right? Yeah, no, and then people should be capitalized. And then also at the top in the purpose, uh, indigenous peoples should be plural and capitalized. Uh, at the very top line on purpose. Yeah. My thing is going a little slow right here, sorry. There must be two versions of this somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, here, I'll, I'll fix it. I just wanted to make sure that I had the two, just those, those ones. <clears throat> okay, we can move on. Okay, so next on the agenda, we do have just a conversation on National Night Out, discussion on truth telling. So this one, as I've been informed, may not actually end up taking the, the entire time in, in the box as it is. So uh, I would like to make sure that we do at least touch base on this quickly. And, and then we do come back in our next meeting and actually go into more detail on this item. Um, but I just do want to hand this off to uh, Commissioners Ali and also Commissioner uh, Dillard. Are we inviting comments from the public on it? Oh, um, yes, uh, the public, if you would like to speak on this item, you do have the opportunity. I'm just not sure how many people can know about it as of now that are currently here. Thank you for the reminder as well. Uh, do we have anyone in the public that would like to comment on this agenda item? I, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, so from here, it looks like, yeah, Commissioners Ali and Commissioner Dillard, uh, you do have the floor. I'm gonna let Commissioner Ali start off. Yeah, just hang on, I'm trying to get the right page up here. Um, so I kind of, uh, when I had written this down, I wanted to leave it as an open-ended conversation because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page about what we envision a truth-telling session um, to look like or be like. So in the notes here, um, do you, I don't know, Steph, is it easier if I share my screen with that if it's in the packet, no, I can, or... yeah, I can share mine. Okay, perfect. Um, so, um, I just think that it's really important that we're all, like I said, on the same page 
um, and that we're kind of aligned in what we envision this to look like. Um, and so I'm going to preface this also with um, four of us, uh, Commissioner Traore, Commissioner Dillard, and um, Commissioner um, Trasity and Commissioner Daniel and I, um, we spoke to a few members of the Divided Community Project um, who have kind of been following along on this journey um, since the get-go. Um, and their kind of specialties uh, with a lot of the um, people who are in this um, in this group are things that deal with mediation, restorative justice. Um, you know, I've talked about Ron Wakabayashi, who was involved in a TRC process and is currently involved in the California reparations process. And so we had a long conversation um, just talking about um, even if we had a truth telling. Um, session at the national night out and what that would look like and you know then we kind of realized um through dialogue that we're not really all on the exact same page of what we want to get out of this truth telling session um and you know we decided that you know it might not be the best idea to do this session along with the national night out because you know, a lot of the goal with the um, National Night Out is to bring the community together um, with the police and with first responders and things like that. And um, I just don't know that it would be in our best interest to have a session there without really, really, really putting some long thought into it. Um, and one of the people that's involved in the Divided Community Project um, sent me this really great email after and um, graciously has given me her permission to um, share some of her thoughts and um, share some of her ideas uh, from what she got from our conversation, from her experience working in mediation and things like that. Um, so, there is just like a few questions that I think are really important. Uh, what do we hope to accomplish with these sessions? Um, what changes are we seeking? Um, and if, are those changes for the individual, the truth teller, the community, the broader Iowa City, um, the, 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 the officials or like the commission itself? Um, and, you know, she says, you know, that the answers to these questions are going to be really fundamental in giving us good framework um, on how we're going to go forward as a commission when we have these uh, truth telling sessions. Um, so uh, she gave these definitions that I thought were perfect and really well written about a bunch of different kinds of truths. So I'm going to read them. <clears throat> and these are not textbook or dic dictionary definitions. Um, a lot of these definitions are used in transformative justice field and situations like that. But um, so there's forensic truth, which is used to gather evidence to establish what happened, to reveal secrets, um, create a culture of accountability. This often includes gathering information, legal slash liability considerations, investigations, oaths, testimony. This type of truth engagement is especially important when there has been gaslighting, dis slash misinformation, or secrecy. The purpose is to reveal truth, what has been hidden, distorted, and to make it known and public often includes investigators, lawyers, law experts, um, and the tone of this is a lot more formal. Uh, the next thing is narrative truth. Um, it's used for sharing personal stories and experiences of making public what has been a painful or harmful purple ex personal experience. Um, this is centered around the victim. Uh, the focus is usually on healing, the acknowledgement of pain, 
validation. Um, there's care and compassion that's offered. Um, it's usually supported by therapists, trauma specialists, public health professionals, um, faith or traditional leaders. Um, dialectic or dialogue truth um, is used to exchange truths, to share truths, uh, to learn more through stories, filling in gaps, broadening, understanding, co-creating a more complex and honest collective narrative, well-facilitated uh, public dialogues and town meetings can serve this purpose. Uh, this is kind of when we have this conversation, this is kind of the forum that Mo was envisioning. Um, the takeaways could include recommendations for the commission. Uh, the point isn't tearing down or proving someone wrong or debating. The focus is on dynamic shifts taking place between people as they share the truth of their experience using collective energy to move forward in constructive ways co-editing the past and co-authoring the future. Um, mediators, group facilitators, people like the Divided Community Project are gonna be really useful um, for this type of truth-telling process. Um, there's restorative truth. Uh, the emphasis on restorative truth is deep listening where people come together because they really wanna learn, they want to grow, they wanna heal and transform relationships and ways of relating. Um, the tone is really intentional, careful, and can be gentle even. Um, here, asking for forgiveness, saying I'm sorry, and the initial, and the initial steps towards recon reconciliation might take place. Processes are often done in circles and can include rituals um, and she said, you know, like indigenous practices, um, but again, facilitators should include um, mental or spiritual health leaders. Um, and so this is, the last one is moral truth. It's probably the most well known because it was used um, in South Africa's truth and reconciliation process. Um, they, the victims in that process, they wanted to know why someone did what they did versus what they did. So it was more about the why. Uh, they wanted an explanation, even if it wasn't a good one. They wanted to give them, a ch they wanted a chance to face their perpetrators, the individual perpetrators and the state perpetrators. Um, the outcomes were powerful. Um, and they can be very powerful. They giving individuals or individual communities a chance to reclaim power and dignity. Uh, the tone is pain, indignation, hurt, shock, anger, sometimes release, um, but must also be supported by specialists. Uh, this process can be one of churning, so knowing how to manage this specific process as dynamics is especially critical where we would want someone um, who is well versed in that uh, field. Um, so after listening to me blab for about five, 10 minutes, um, I'm gonna stop talking and then I just kind of wanna hear what you guys have to say or like what if that invoked any thoughts from you guys um so yeah i just wanted to say that i really enjoyed the meeting that we did get to have with the divided community project and that um the insight one very good but two to get the actual notes such as this would be really good going forward in terms of giving us a framework uh, for you know the different types of listening sessions and something that could really benefit us going forward if we do also want to do something like this for the national night out but um as well in terms of how we want these things facilitated uh for each subcommittee as well um in terms of when our, as people continue to reach out uh this could be something that we could show them as well in terms of the type of process that they would like to see for how that truth telling session goes. Um, at least that's just my thought on it.
I'm curious whether when the conversation was going on, whether the word reparative truths arose at all. You said a uh, reparative truth as in? Yeah, yeah, because I see restorative, I see reconciliation, but there is always reparation. But I, I don't see that on this list. Um, I'm just not sure in terms of, I don't think that exact term was used at all, but I'm not sure how uh, we would essentially include like reparative truth in the sense that the reparations, I believe is just the act of the actual um, granting of, of the monetary values, whereas connecting that with the truth um, I think that would also kind of be its own process within that. That would probably have to come from the actual truth telling session. But in terms of defining that, that's something that we could also have um, a meeting on where we do look to get that defined, where we do look to ask more on that. But I do know that Amel did want to get uh, Ron Wakabayashi as well in for, um, for a presentation to us. And he is the one that had been successful in getting reparations in the past and is currently working on that again. So it seems like we could get that, you know, looked at a little more. Yeah, and I thank uh, Commissioner Sakawi is always for not letting us that, leave that behind as we move forward on getting, as we move in listening to truths and moving to reconciliation, not to leave that behind as we keep moving. Because it could leave wounds that are still festering or just sweeping things under the carpet, and yeah. So I just wanna make sure that I write this down correctly. You want to have a conversation um, on like reparative truth, right? Yeah, that it shouldn't, uh, I like the way Commissioner Chair Triori has separated separation from the listening to the truth. Uh, my thing is just not leaving reparations behind as we continue to listening and making recommendations and having conversations. Yeah. Uh, when reading through this, these different types of truths, I think the two that stick out the most to me for the TRC um, would have to be the uh, narrative truth and um, and dialect or dialogue truth. Those two stand out the most when I think of what our process would look like. Um, but I do think that, you know, um, different sessions might, you know, we might need different types of truths or we might have different um, purposes with the different sessions. Like I don't see you know, a session with women where we're talking about domestic violence and sexual abuse being um, a forensic truth telling session, you know, I don't think it's going to be us investigating and all of that. I think it might be more of like a narrative truth or a restorative truth. Um, but that's, I, I think that Muhammad did have like a good point in that we have different kinds of truths here that might be good for different might be good might have different purposes Does anyone else have any other comments that they wanted to make on this and then i do know that we do have a member of the uh, divided community project here tonight and if you as well would like to make any comments on this, um, you are welcome to. 
it's a little bit difficult for me to kind of decide what what I'm hoping um, to sort of lead with when it comes to orienting these sessions, partly because I don't know what the public wants to say, right? Um, I don't know what they're looking, what they might be looking for um, in these truth telling sessions. Um, and so, you know, that gets us into a little bit of a catch 22. Um, but I like the idea of at least um, sort of offering a few different options um, when, when we do invite people to come and say, here, here's sort of some of the options that we've been mulling over in terms of um, truth when it comes to your participation. And, and you can inform us about um, kind of the purpose that you come to us with in, in sharing your story. I'll piggyback on, this is Commissioner Gadua, I'll piggyback on what Kevo is saying, um, thinking all these ways of seeking truth, it, to me, the way I see it, it depends. And uh, for my purposes right now, oh, I remember suggesting and talking to Anitaka in the community and uh, at some point having conversations and even coming to the commission and talk about that on using restorative uh, re re circles who, where we would use, we would use restoration format of listening to people's truths or listening to the community, the Iowa city community wide, listening to all the communities. Then, uh, we are also having from the African communities as we plan to listen. In that one, we haven't as yet, we, we are starting to approach it from a research action model. But as we move forward, it keeps, it hasn't yet lent the best format of uh, of gathering the truth, but in a cultural proficient way, right now, using narrative truth lends itself to those communities, to their culture. So what I'm saying, oh yeah, we can have the general format, but it, it depends on what we are doing then. Mel has her hand. I yield, yeah. Amel, did you? Uh, okay. Yeah, I was just going to, my suggestion, I think so we can kind of, I mean, not like get things moving, but like we should set up a truth telling session. Um, and I'm not saying that, I don't think that it should be on the national night out. Um, but I think that it would be important to get something like at least a ball rolling on something like, you know, having a session that is specific, like, for example, <clears throat> maybe the week of the National Night Out, we could have a truth telling session in the South District. And this topic could be how over policed and over supervised and all of this the people feel and we let the people know that we're going to be here documenting people's experiences and the point of it is going to be for um dialogue truth we're going to exchange truth share we're going to learn through our stories and we'll record that and the purpose for that might be dialectic or dialogue truth whereas then you know maybe like five months from now, we'll have one with, you know, kind of something that's more along uh, Commissioner Gathua's expertise, where we deal with um, domestic violence in specific communities. And that might not be something where we want to do dialect or dialogue truth. That might be something where we just want to do um, narrative truth, where we're just listening and offering support to, you know, the women that are there or, you know, and that kind of also brings another thing that like, 
I don't know if every one of the commissioners also should be at all of the, and I think that was something we kind of talked about too, if like all of the commissioners are necessary at every single one of the truth telling sessions. Like if we have ones for like women who are dealing with domestic and sexual abuse things, I don't know that it would be helpful to have all of us here. Uh, all of us at that specific session. Um, so I think that that's something that we should also think about um, as well when it comes to these truth telling sessions. But I, I really think that, I think that it is important that we get the ball rolling um, on something like that. And I know that there might be a lot of questions or issues. And actually after this, Eric, you can talk cause I'm gonna kinda, use you here and um, say like someone like Eric, who's perfect because he knows people in that community who have dealt with that stuff. So he can like bring those people and, you know, I don't have to worry that anything's going to happen or anyone's going to get angry with each other because Eric's there, you know, nobody in the community is going to disrespect anyone while Eric's there, especially in that community. He's very respected. Or if, you know, we've got Angie Jordan helping facilitate or things like that. I think these are things that can happen that we should we should work towards making happen. And I want to do that sooner rather than later. Um, and I'll yield the floor to Eric. Um, so this is Eric Harris. So one of the things that we are kind of leaving out um, and I haven't heard it discussed in this conversation is we're leaving out the um, African-American community. So I haven't heard anything discussed about that, you know. Um, the truth telling will come from them, you know, because they are the people who I, who has been marginalized for many of years, almost, I talked about it with a few other people, it's been about 400 years. That's the community that has been marginalized. And the, the, the part about domestic violence and things like that, that's, that's, that's what we want to talk about, you know. Um, so with that, I'm here to floor. I just want to say that um, I've, I, like, I've been feeling lately that the African-American community has been marginalized. And, and, and I just want to be able to have people come from that community to speak more. So with that, I yield. I just do want to add that um, while, I, while I do agree, I would like to caution that um, I think there are more demographics where we can get the truth from just with the fact that um, the United States, what is now called the United States being settled since back in the 1400s or so with um, Native Americans and indigenous peoples that had been here as well at that time. So we do have many groups that can be, uh, you know, very helpful in this truth telling aspect. I just don't wanna get into the habit of singling anyone out, but we, I do think that we will be sure to at least bring forward the concerns and needs of anyone and everyone that would like to, you know, speak on um, speak on uh, their needs for truth and reconciliation. Additionally, another thing I would like to say and add is that um, uh, thank you, Eric, one for as well. Um, so when we what, how you were speaking on earlier about how we needed more of the African immigrant uh, mindset. Uh, so uh, Commissioner Harris did forward on to me actually someone that is looking to assist with that. So he has uh, studied um, urban and regional planning at the University of Iowa and is wanting to look, do a more holistic approach on community development. And with that, he is actually an immigrant from um, Africa. So uh, right now he is actually, he just had to go back overseas with his family but he will be in touch in the coming weeks uh, to do an initial meeting. For commissioner announcements. Um, wouldn't this be as related to actually doing um, a little bit more of what Commissioner Gathaway had talked about? Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm kind of thinking we are responding to their agenda and that's what i'm thinking to their item under discussion i could be wrong 
I, I think just to, to be mindful, the agenda item is national night out discussion on truth telling. So anything that would relate to that is what should be discussed by commission members. That is all I really had on that. Just wanted to yeah, make that known that we do have other outlets for uh, helping with that truth telling aspect and also just collecting information. So if anyone has anything else like that, um, just please keep in contact with them and just make sure that they do feel that they can participate uh, in our processes. And I yield the floor with that. And then um, if we don't have anything else on it, one thing I would like to do is just at least give the public a reminder on the date for National Night Out. And uh, Commissioner Diller, what would that be again? It is um, Tuesday, August 3rd. The time should be six to eight. It may oh. or may not change, but it is on Tuesday, August 3rd. And that'd be Weatherby Park as well? Weatherby Park. All right, thank you very much. Do we have anyone else looking to comment on this item at this time? I'm just gonna, so at the next meeting, I'm gonna come up with a date on a time where maybe we could do a truth telling um, in the South District and I'll reach out to the president and the vice president and see if there's something that we can do around them. That way um, we can at least notify the National Night Out people and then be able to um, promote that event at National Night Out at the very least. And I'll, I'll present something next week and um, or at the next meeting and then we can approve it or not approve it. I have a discussion on that. This is uh, Commissioner Dillard and I think, um, thank you so much Jamel for putting for putting together or gathering the information for the different truths um, to share with us tonight. I was just hoping we can all talk about the different questions in our subcommittees um, so we can have maybe more of a, a detailed discussion next time about truth telling. Yeah, 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 yeah. That can be something that we can, um, everyone has this, so that can be something that we all speak on at the next uh, subcommittee meeting for all of us. Okay, sounds like uh, we are good to go on that aspect. So now we are on to the next topic, which is the budget subcommittee updates and overview. So I did have the opportunity to have a quick meeting with Commissioner Ali on this one. And I have um, kind of an outline for the final budget proposal. So this is something that I will need to share my screen for. And I will do that now. And Stephanie, I will also be sure to send this to you for the final packet. Okay, so um, put this in a more concise format for everyone to be able to see. So I have the total lines for general budget and also subcommittee here. So we do have the option to either go through and vote until October for um, our expenses and needs, or we do also have the option to vote through the end of 2021 as well. So whatever everyone is comfortable with. But one thing before we begin discussion that I just wanna speak on is just the, in terms of the numbers that I have for researcher collaborator pay is that I was kind of just looking at the aspect of, um, so we are going to be looking to have, you know, secretary kind of thing or strategic planner facilitator. So these are items where I wasn't particularly sure how we wanted to split those things out. Um, oops. 
yeah. I thought I would... that we, do we not need, we, can we go, I thought we decided to nix the Chromebook thing. So, so for so the staff, for the staff member yeah. and themselves that we are not doing that. Unless Steph wants a Chromebook, I guess, if she feels it's necessary. Oh, I have it listed as this would be for the facilitator, the potential secretary, and the strategic planner so that they have a computer oh, dedicated oh. to this group. Okay, yeah, 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 just one. Okay, I thought you meant for like Steph or for each of us. No. And since you're contracting with the potential secretary, strategic planner, and facilitator, I, I mean, certain things you would presume that they would have as part of their capacity to serve as a professional to the commission. So, you, you know, it's up to the commission, but I, I, I would hope that, that anybody who you would select as a facilitator would, you, you know, have their own type of computer system to be able to utilize for the, for, you know, your, your needs with them. Um, the, the fact that the, the TRC would fund the purchase of computer equipment from them wouldn't affect public, you know, records or requests or anything. I mean, it, it you know, whether they're using uh, a laptop that they purchased or one that was purchased with city funds wouldn't affect that. It would still be, you know, open to public uh, records, so. Sounds good to me. Uh, so I have removed that for, for now. Uh, sounds like, yeah, that is something that they could also put into their proposal. Um, and then for now, um, I did add a line for a strategic planner is thinking that that would kind of be a position that has a little bit more of a little bit more responsibility. So that 8,000 a month, uh, if it did come down to that, so that 8,000 a month would end up extrapolating to about 96K a year. So I don't know if that is the amount that they would ask for in their proposal, but the point of the budget again is to at least ask for the funds in advance to then have those separated out just so that if that is the amount that is needed, then we do have that ability to, um, to get those funds distributed. So any amount in here, um, what is used in the end could be higher or lower. However, I just wanted to at least ensure that we did request for these amounts so that the budget could be set aside. And Steph, I have a question. Okay. Um, so if let's say, for example, um, for the month of October, we didn't need that 18K for um, experts slash training, but we wanted to get in another person for strategic planning. Um, one, how easy is it to change that? And two, who do we, do we have to ask permission before we pay out or do any type of like, you know, like if we're getting funds for materials, like, do I have to add, do I pay for the materials first, then get reimbursed? Is there, how does that work? Uh, so if you're talking about, um, you know, whether the strategic planner um, doesn't uh, do any work for you and I, October, but the expert training does. Um, that, that really doesn't affect your overall budget. Uh, we pay off of invoices. And so somebody would just submit an invoice and it would be paid out of that. In terms of whether you would need a prior approval, um, you would not need prior approval as long as there was a, um, a majority consensus on the TRC to move forward with X planner or X strategic planner. So am I answering your questions? Um, I think so. if we find a time to chat tomorrow, I'll write down other questions I have and I can ask you that. Oh, okay. I just wanted to clarify this experts training line before we continue forward is that actually, so I meant to actually just have these apportioned for August and September, just when I was transposing the sheet and um, adding the months of October, November, December, it got copied in as well. Just wanted to make everyone aware of that change. I'll highlight that here as well so that it's more visible. Um, however, um, so in terms of research or pay, collaborators, collaborators, consultants, just wanted to quickly define those. And then Kevin, I'll give you the opportunity. But our research or pay would then essentially just be if there was a specific area that we wanted 
um, someone in the community or a student to look into or that we're asking for their expertise on, then at least having the outlet to pay for that expertise or at least to pay them for their labor. And then for collaborators, consultants, um, again, people from the community that are looking to advise us directly or uh, people uh, in general um, around you know, the nation as well that would be looking to advise us, having funds available to distribute to those, to those people. Um, and just totaling this uh, budget through December 21st, if it were to be passed as is, that would be a total of 243,000. However, we do have the option once again to just choose to pass a budget through, you know, the month of end of the month of September, end of the month of October, and come back to the rest of it um, in the coming months. I just wanted to include through December in case we decided otherwise. And then Kevo, I'll let you go ahead. Um, I think most of this looks good. Um, the only thing that I'm unprepared to vote on to approve is, is line item for the strategic planner. Um, just because I just I don't think that we as a commission have had sufficient time to discuss um, like how to use a strategic planner and when they would be useful to us. Um, and I, I, I really don't think that we would have um, enough knowledge from the community um, by October to kind of know what to plan for the future. Um, and so that's the only thing that I would not include at this juncture. And also for that reason, I think that it would be good to approve the budget only until October when we kind of force ourselves to revisit um, what other help that we need when once we have more facilitation going. And with that, I yield, thanks. Yeah, I would generally have to agree with that. I just wanna see if everyone else does, would like me to delete that strategic planner line. Uh, and then we can come back to that going forward. And as well, just thoughts on approving budget um, just after we have more continued discussion through the end of September, or would we rather do through the end of October? I want to vote on it, so that's where I'm at. Uh, Chastity, just want to give you the opportunity first and foremost to, to speak. Um, I just wanted to say I have to uh, agree with Commissioner Kevo. I am still a little confused about the strategic planner, so I, I, I don't feel comfortable having that on there as of now um, until we have a little bit more clarification exactly what we're going to have this person do at this time. And I yield the floor. Is there going to be back pay? Or is it starting this month, like for um, commission? That's something stipend. that needs to be discussed as well. I just wanted, I didn't want to include anything that we hadn't spoken on yet in that. Um, so, um, so I can go. Um, the back pay part, um, I have my, my own opinions about it. Um, you know, when we had the meeting where we um, um, did the thing with Roy Sand, whatever you want to call it. Um, during that time, I was in the hospital. So I want people to hear that and understand. Um, I was sick, really sick and in a bad position. So the back pay part, you know, I kind of agree with that part. But, you know, during that time, you know, nobody didn't know. I didn't tell anybody, but I was in the hospital and dealing with a serious health condition. So. And during the pandemic, we were the people, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, put people, you know, in different positions, but like Kevo, Muhammad, Amel, we all did TRC things during that time. So and I know people was in different, different spots and different positions. So, and with that, I'm going to yield the floor. So. Uh, we have Commissioner Gothel's hand raised. Okay, here is Commissioner Wangui. I, I'm just curious as to whether um, um, the who. Uh, I guess I'm just not seeing the point of leaving out the just the last two months and just voting just up to October. 
and not all the way to December. One is just the fun commitments. Two, it's just, once again, it's more all of your preferences. I'm fine with doing it either way. I just want to make sure that I don't include anything that everyone on the commission hasn't agreed on. Okay. Okay. I just want to add, oh, sorry. I just want to add that since I'm new to the commission that I want to abstain from discussing back pay and I trust the expertise uh, and the work that has been put in prior to this, uh, to the many people that have worked really hard to get to this point and have gone through a lot of uh, drama, if you will, um, and uh, emotional labor, actually, that's a better way to put it, um, to get us to like this, this good point that we're at. So um, like, I don't know if new commissioners should necessarily receive back pay, but like, I definitely think that people that were on it and had to deal with a lot of emotional labor should probably receive some back pay. That's just a thought I'm having. Um, and then I want to like, then I want to step back and let like you all decide that. Um, one thing I would like to ask is if the back pay is done, are we looking for that to be the same amount as the um, um, current uh, proposals for commissioner stipends uh, for those of us that have been on the commission, or are we looking for that to be retroactive at a certain percentage? And I just want to make sure it's just clear and known so that I just know what to include. Can you repeat the beginning half of the question between before retroactive? So in terms of the actual back pay for the months people have been on the commission, are we looking for that to be the same amount as what we're looking to do now going forward? Or are we looking to do that as a certain percentage of it? Because I do also want to think about the fact that we did have one month where the commission was paused as well. But again, it's just something I just want to get on record. How many, how, how many meetings did we go to before that one month? How many months was it? I believe it was, it was December. Your December. first meeting was in December. I want to say the 20th maybe or the 21st. I can look it up, but. So six. Six meetings, then that would be uh, 3,000. Uh, Commissioners Rivera and Harris, how do you feel on this as well? Um, some people, um, this is Commissioner Harris, um, some people are not well off as other people are. So to go back, um, I agree with going back and paying people for their time, you know. Um, well, we're, we're going to do that, I think. Um, I, it's what they were I saying don't. Was they didn't want to be that? involved. They just didn't want to be involved because they weren't here during those meetings. So they're leaving, they're leaving yeah. the decision for us. And I'm saying that since we were involved in six meetings prior to the new start of the commission, that would add up to $3,000 each for the six meetings that we did. So what's the problem with that? He's asking no. if you have a problem with it. No, there's no problem. And no, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't have a problem with that at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have a problem either. I, I want you all to have back pay. That's my, my, my thought is yes, you, we should all absolutely get back pay. Um, and the, the new commissioners, we're in a different position than the past commissioners. So I just didn't want to like be making... Uh, decisions um, in this capacity simply because I know that there was an intense amount of emotional labor that went into the six meetings prior to like myself uh, and other commissioners getting on board. So I just think that it's really important for this conversation to be had between the other ones that have been on this long term. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, I'm all for back pay. Like, uh, I just wanted y'all to figure out how much and whatever, like together. Like the amount, I mean, the amount doesn't matter to me. It's just that like um, the back pay part, that should be part of it. Um, 
I reached out to other commissioners and we talked about this and the back pay part. I mean, I think that's kind of important because I know commissioners that went through, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad, but I know commissioners that went through, you know, the Roy Sand times and things like that. So that's make, that, 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 that would, that, I mean, that gets me to say, Hey, the back pay is legitimate. And if we had a vote on it, I will vote on that. So, um, I'd also have to agree. Um, so at this time, I was working for a different company, and at that time, to be able to make it to these meetings in a solid time frame, I was using my own PTO to to make it, and as a result, I was then working some overtime hours to then accrue more PTO to once again continue making meetings and then we did have some of the meetings that were going till you know 11 p.m and um the tumultuous one towards the end that did result in the pause that one i ended up getting home close to one in the morning and had to you know be back up and be back to work the next morning once again so a lot of those things aren't considered and then at the same time when you do have the press just continually trying to call you and bothering you and you don't have a sense of whether that is a call that you need to pick up because it's someone that you know and then it's important or whether it's just the press haggling you uh it really does begin to get to you and can cause some mental discomfort but just want that to be known as why i do think back pay should be done and also that that be a blanket back pay for all former uh, commissioners that were here pre-pause as well for each meeting attended. So will that apply to new commissioners for the two meetings that we've had prior to this or whatever it was we've had? Or is that is that like a different conversation to have? What are, what I, are you saying? I, I would say that, yeah, for that would probably be lumped in as well. I, okay. Uh, I would just put it as a separate item. Can you oh, wait? I was you, asking a question. Yeah, I just I'm I missed your last sentence and then your answer to her question regarding. Oh, I was just wondering, okay, so this is great. Like if that's what you want to vote on for the back pay for uh, the prior commission to this new one. Um, and then I was just wondering how to deal with uh, the new commissioners um, and how that will work. So that's that's something I definitely would weigh in, weigh in on. And then I just want to make a quick comment. Um, looking at this budget, um, makes me very proud. Um, and I wanna say thank you to Mohammed for putting this, like that's a lot of work. I make budgets a lot and I know how time consuming it is. And um, I'm just really proud to see that uh, because um, like when you think about this budget, this is really a very small amount of it and like of the total budget that we have. And um, I, I think that um, nobody should expect uh, the kind of work that we're doing uh, for free anymore. And I just like think this is a really badass looking budget for that reason. Thank you. Thank you very much as well for the compliment. Yeah, I want to add my thank you to that for the, the budget subcommittee for the work that you are doing. And I'm coming from a point of somebody who is pretty challenged on making budgets and who's very, my sight is very short as far as seeing budgets are concerned. So thank you for doing that on our behalf. And yes, it does make more sense to me uh, for back pay. And I won't say anything else on that other than yes, it's something that should be done. I yield. So you're, the value that you're putting in right now is gonna also be for giving, I just wanna make sure uh, that what you're putting in for that, for pre-TRC pause, the times nine. So you mean a thousand for Roy San, a thousand for Tishalen, a thousand for... Uh, for the, yeah, for, for the pre-TRC pause. So uh, we did have the six meetings prior. So it's just doing that at that rate of 500 per meeting since it was the biweekly monthly meetings. So and the then nine it, is for the nine previous members. Yes, the so nine. You should yes. make that, I'm going to say you should make that four. That's me saying right now you should make it four. I don't think that you need to make it nine. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I, I, I do know what you mean, but in the spirit of one solidarity and two fairness, uh, they were in those meetings as well, and they did take the time out as well. So I don't feel that it would be okay to to disclude them. I I don't. I'm gonna have to disagree on that one. I don't think that I agree at all. Uh, Commissioner yeah. Amel, I wonder with the. Uh, I'm curious whether there wouldn't be questions afterwards if there was exclusion. And this there is fair. Um, the only thing I was I, I'm not, guys. If if I I can I can get frank and real about it. If you want me to get frank and real about it, truly. But in my heart of hearts, I don't feel like that that is the right decision at all. I'll take my pre-TRC pause pay to make it so that I don't know none of us get it. I'm serious. I don't, I don't agree with that. The way that I was spoken to after meetings, the way that I was spoken to before meetings was told to silence and not vote on things. I don't think that that was in good spirit. The stuff that I endured after meetings, the three hour long phone calls about how I just shouldn't be agreeing with Raneem or IFR, I'm not with that. And I don't want to be a part of that commission that's earning money if it's all nine of us. And that's just like a me thing. I'm not, I don't think that that's right. I don't think that they were in this commission for the right reasons and I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna be okay with that. Um, I will go next. Um, the $9,000 I see that's on the spreadsheet, um, I will put that at a different number. Like we could spend money on something else different, like maybe $5,000, I don't know, but like the $9,000 part, I don't, yeah I, 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 yeah, I don't want that much money, so. And what um, the vice chair said, I oh, agree. I just with want to quickly clarify: it's a thousand per person per month, so we're not each getting nine thousand. That's that'd be the total for yeah. The, that's what's, all nine people. Okay, because I agree with with what uh, Emil said about dealing with the Roy Sand things and, and I didn't the say phone calls after. Name. I didn't say anyone's name. I just said you that. said it. <laughs> It was not a pleasant experience, and I don't agree that. Uh, uh, I want to respond to Commissioner Amil, and and uh, and I'm talking from a point of not being there, but thinking of blanketly work done, other than going into the details of what each individual commission. Uh, disaggregating what piece of work did somebody do or not do or just blanketly that they were there as a commission and uh, the yeah coming from that that position and i think i'm being a devil's advocate here this is kind of a difficult situation so we got to figure it out i think we should figure it out today so this mm -hmm. This is Commissioner Rivera. I um I appreciate just kind of the acknowledgement and the honesty that everyone's put forth so far um, in terms of recognizing um, how emotional, uh, how much emotional labor there has been in, in terms of our in, our involvement previous to the pause and, and ongoing. Right, this is still really difficult work. Um, it's really hard for me to think back <laughs> and to think about sort of the, um, how much chaos there was in, in trying to sort of find order in, in the chaos. Um, I think that when we're, when we are, when we have discussed uh, a commission stipend, we're, we're talking about sort of just willingness to say yes at any given point um, at any at any point during the commission. Um, and so I think that is one of the reasons why, you know, it's been brought forth that, yeah, and for those of us who are on the commission, we should get back pay, um, um, you know, prorated to, to our, our involvement in the meetings. And, and um, I, uh, for that reason, in, in terms of just saying yes, at least for the moment, I would be in support of um, providing back pay to, um, the now resigned commissioners, the, the former members of this commission, because um, 
they were part of the TRC for the for some time. And if we're saying that members of the TRC should receive stipend, then it should be um, members of the TRC. You know, I said I wouldn't <laughs> say anything, but oh my God, like, so I've just, from years of experience, years of lateral oppression and having to deal with like working with people that then like you know break up and like go their separate ways because of like um ideal ideological differences um i actually do believe as well that they should receive back pay because um we're classy and like we're a cool group of folks that understands the labor put in is the labor put in by bipoc folks still um and i feel like it's a form of like um like it's like being it's like a form of retribution then to not give them that back pay um even though there was an immense amount of like uh emotional labor that they stirred up um i do think that it is highly important for us to put our best foot forward um and and i know that like it might sound hard to do that but this is something I struggle with every day in the work that I do. Um, as you all know, um, I've been organizing for 25 years. And in the end, like it is best to do um, what is considered uh, just. And I do think that, that it is just to give them that back pay if we are going to decide to give us that back pay. Otherwise, we may look like we are not um, uh you know, we're thinking about only us and not about the uh you know and also being uh divisive which is what we're trying not to be so we're giving the new commissioners the back pay as well um i you know i'm i'm yeah i mean i can get back pay but really i i'm not like that heartfelt about it like wait who's who are the two new commissioners is it just me or no there's another new commissioner there's, I am new too. I think oh, I, I'm not sure if I came five in new with you. Questions. Yeah. There's five there's new five, five yeah. of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's five new commissioners. I mean, like that's a whole other topic, I guess. But um, there's more yeah. I just, I just think topic. like I really appreciate everything that like Amal and Mohammed and and uh, uh, I'm sorry, who else is there? Uh, Cliff and uh, sorry, not Cliff. Who 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 is that? The, Eric. 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 Sorry, Eric. Yes. Um, and Chastity? Or no, it's just you four, right? Or you three? Okay. Oh, there's four of you. Okay. So I just want to say, I really appreciate what you guys did to lay the foundations that we're having these healthy conversations. So I really want you to like have that back pay myself and the new commissioners. Like I'm not that worried about it because it's only been like a short amount of time. Um, but like you guys kind of went to war in a way <laughs> so i just want to say i appreciate it um and yeah and then also my other comments about like just getting it over with and moving on i would like to add i do believe you guys do yes. I, I i agree you do deserve back pay you you are the ones who started things off and stuck around and are still pushing forward. That I, I, I believe everyone who is currently on here now definitely deserves back pay. And I'm gonna go, this is Commissioner Harris, I'm gonna go too, because um, I'm kinda, you know, I try to keep my cool about different things and, and stuff like that, but some people who are well off and, you know, with money and stuff like that, you know, money is, you know, it's just an object, you know, but, some people have put in so much time into this commission and those people should be compensated. It's not really an argument to have, you know, the people that are well off who can, you know, you know, as far as African Americans and people in America or Native Americans too, because I'm part Native American. So I understand that part too. Some people need compensation. Some people are not well off all the time in their life. So with that, I'm yield the floor. Uh, I will add, as we talk about the stipend and back pay, uh, I just want to add that whether there would be a differential for the chair and the vice, just because they have an added responsibility compared to the other seven of us. I yield. Commissioner Wangui. I'd rather get paid the same amount as you all. Okay. I don't see 
I don't think just because I have the title of chair that I'm above anyone in any way. At any time, that position could be moved or changed. And at the end of the day, we are all a unit and there's nothing I can put forward without a complete vote with all of you, so. Um, so I'm gonna, for, I turned my video off because I'm getting emotional about this because it kind of got into something else. Um, like that, I don't think that like people know how hard that pause was for me and how big of a kick and like the only way that I could have used to describe that pause was like for like a week, the light was burnt out in me. Like the fire was completely burnt out because the counselor that I was the closest to betrayed me by suggesting, you know, that this commission be paused. Um, and I know that, and you know, I agree with what Kevo and Sakawa said, like, yeah, it, it is true to like be the bigger person um, and stuff like that. And it, it's, you know, like it, they do in the spirit of like justness, it is, it is right to do that. But then also, you know, it sucks. Like I'm out of Mo, um, Kevo, Eric and I am the only black woman, you know? I, I don't think that anyone except for maybe Mohammed knows how much effort I put in to trying to make things work when we got back. There was so much stuff that we should have done the first time around that was never addressed because the commission was so like sweeped up by people who had their own agenda that had nothing to do with truth and reconciliation. They, there were, our bylaws were supposed to have been approved and we had never even talked about bylaws in the first six meetings. Like I, I put in so much time into reading all of these, bylaws from different commissions and language that I didn't understand. I read Robert's rules and like I had never even heard of Robert's rules until I started working in this commission. And I just think that, you know, it, it just sucks because we were shit on um, and it hurt and it burned a fire out for a really long time. And I don't think it affected any of the other people um, who didn't have to deal with the fallout. Uh, it sucked. Um, I, I get emotional thinking about how I felt during that meeting because it was such like, it was just like, like the epitome of like what is happening to the black women and uh, to the black woman in the U.S. Like nobody believed in me. Nobody thought Mohammed or I could do this. Nobody, they just shut us down. And then it was up to us to like, just try to figure it out and prove. And like, you know how they all hunky dory at that first meeting back with like counselors and stuff. They were all like, oh yeah, we'll be here for you. Whatever you need, blah, 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 blah one council member has been consistently in contact with me. None of them have sat at any of these meetings except for the one that has been in consistent contact with me. I just want you guys, you know, I, I want that to also be taken into account that like, this is not like, this has been very, very, very stressful especially at the time and Mohammed knows it's like during the pause we met with people who did did truth and reconciliation commissions and things like that and it was just really hard to get that fire <laughs> relit in me and I'm sorry that I'm being emotional um but yeah that's all I'm gonna say about this I'll vote um whatever way we want to vote but that's just kind of my two cents on it I guess I just wanna say thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being vulnerable in that sense. And I really do appreciate everything that you do. And I do appreciate everything that all of you do. I know many of you do say a lot, it's like, oh, you guys do a lot, but I mean, it makes it easy when you do know that you have eight other people standing right alongside you that are also doing a lot of work in the community and that are also dedicated to making sure this works. So I'm more than happy to continue forward knowing that I have all of you alongside me. And Amel, thank you so much for everything that you do as well from doing those, um, from doing the bylaws to the RFP, to also just checking in with me all the time and just making sure that I don't try to do too much each week and that I do make sure that you are supported as well 
and uh, to just each and every one of you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Yeah, sorry. I didn't need, you know, I, you know, and I didn't want to make that be like, oh, look at everything I do. And da, da, da. I just wanted to make sure like it, it was really an emotional toll and it was very stressful. And there were times where I literally just wanted to give up on this because it just it sucks having, you know, like the flame. That's what Angie Jordan told me. She was like, it just sounds like someone has blown out the flame inside of you. And that's how it felt when the commission was paused for a while. <laughs> In reference to um, providing back pay to the other commissioners that are no longer with us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, if I could respond to that, I want to say I feel your pain. I'm so sorry that this was very difficult. Um, and I hope that it's not too upsetting that I, you know, want to uh, provide them with um, their back pay. Um, and I'll, I'll give you this reason. Um, it's because, you know, um, white supremacy um, and, you know, the doctrine of discovery and everything has created a really good job of divide and conquer. Um, and so a lot of our folks, a lot of us deal with like serious lateral oppression um, and have uh, a very embedded, um, you know, sense um, of, of like colonialism still like in our minds, like all of us are trying to decolonize, right? Some of us are like further ahead than others. Um, I'm not saying that these people weren't, I'm not even like commenting on that. I'm just saying that it's a very difficult thing to do this work because um, heads butt often because it is such an emotional topic. Um, and so for that reason, I don't think that um, BIPOC folks who put the work into this um, should be denied uh, that back pay. Um, and like I said, um, in the sense of uh, fairness and, and being just, um, it's it's I think that's up to us to to be that way uh, and and just be good to people that we may have issues with um, from like what's happened in the past um, to also be like a good example um, of how things should be working. So um, I, I know that that might not help you at all feel better, um, but this is just speaking from you know my experience uh, doing this work. Uh, I just think that it's it's really important that we. Uh, you know, just just give them the back pay, and I really hope that that helps a little bit to alleviate any it kind does. of pain you're no, feeling. No, no, I appreciate your input. I really do. Um, and yeah, no, I all of you guys have said like really awesome things, and I do. No, I do agree. I tend to um, have that issue with just you know, I'm I hold grudges sometimes, but no, you guys are all making really really valid points. Um, before I yield to Commissioner Gethua, I just want to make sure that uh, Commissioner Rivera um, got to speak if he was able, if he still had something to say, because he had his hand raised before. Thanks, Vice Chair. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak and also um, for sharing. I, I think what you just modeled for us um, is the importance of sharing truth, right? Um, and, and you also, um, put into words um, kind of what we've been talking about in theory uh, or in principle in, in terms of um, demonstrating uh, <clears throat> how difficult it is to do the work that we're doing, right? And, and what kind of toll it takes. Uh, and, and so you um, did a really good job of, of expressing that. Um, so that's, that's mostly what I wanted to say. Um, I think um, the other things that I'll add is I, I think that all of the present commissioners should receive back pay um, equal to like, I don't know, $500 per meeting attended before the start date of our, the formal start date of um, our stipends. Um, and that rate should apply to former commissioners who are, um, are now resigned as well. Thanks. Commissioner Gathura, are you ready to speak? Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Wangui. Uh, I just want to appreciate you, Commissioner Amel, for being very, very courageous and being very, very honest. I wasn't there, I'm one of the newer commissioners, but I am sorry for what you can go through. And it was summarized very well by Commissioner Sakawis that we always have to remember 
that the colonizers and the enslavers, and especially the British, they were very good at using divide and rule, indirect rule. You don't see them. And it's a gift that continues giving. And always as we work, trying to rise above that, thank you for also uh, being very safe with us to be vulnerable and to be that courageous. I am feeling very, very humbled right now and very honored as we continue moving forward and also being honest about bearing a grudge because that that is not easy to voice it out. And you're not only voicing it out to us as your fellow commissioners, you are voicing it out literally to the whole world. So I appreciate that as we move forward and it's not an easy example and to be there, but you are leading the way. And uh, again, still piggybacking on Commissioner Sakaris and Kevo that as we move forward, uh, we get reminded that it's not an easy thing that we are doing. It's difficult. And sometimes uh, it might even become more difficult even as we continue moving and especially when we move on to post COVID and it's even face to face. And now it's not just us, it's also we are out there with the public. So thank you very much. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Let Cliff go. I'm um, just wondering about uh, the divide and conquer when it comes down to uh, what took place before. Um, if if somebody could fill me in on that, that would be appreciated. And me personally, as a commissioner, a new commissioner, also, I don't see a reason why I would get any back pay. I didn't do anything yet. Didn't have anything to do with anything yet. I don't see a reason why I need any back pay. However, <laughs> I, I still <laughs> definitely stand by every person who is still currently on here getting and receiving back pay and compensation for uh, dealing with things and then still moving forward. It's, it's, um, yeah, I, I would, I'm not sure about the divide and conquer. I, I would like, if somebody could explain that part to me, I'd love it. I just like I think to I like you. explain that if you want, because I'm the one okay, that I'm gonna go through. Oh, I'd sorry. like to just quickly summarize that for you, for you, Cliff. Is just it was not a very conducive environment to how we wanted to move forward, and I know Amel and Kevo can speak to this as well. I quickly noticed after, after I think it was a second meeting, um, for those that were there or got to see it on video, you could clearly see in Renee Hamad's eyes that she was about to be about to break down in tears during the meeting. However, it was a very hostile environment and she kept getting shut down. And I was seeing right there personally, okay, if this is how we're treating our own commissioners right here, there's no one in this community that is going to stand in front of us and talk about anything that makes them vulnerable. And then there were, so we reached out to her right after that meeting to let her know that we don't, feel that that's how things should be going and that while not everyone agrees with her, that her opinions still are welcome. And from there, we did have another meeting where we had some individuals from the public that wanted to have comment. And me seeing, you know, we're public officials in a way, we're supposed to be listening to the public and that's the whole point of everything. Having public comment continually shut down was just a terrible precedent to set. So that was another thing that was just really bad for the environment. And I don't wanna point specific fingers at people because they do know who they are. And I think most people do know who they are by now. Others can do that if they'd like, but I'm ready to move on from it at this point. Um, and if they do wanna help us going forward, that's cool. If not, that's fine as well. We will still get to where we need to go. I yield the floor. Good to go. Um, I had my hand up, but I'll, I'll just go. Um, yeah, the, the term divide and conquer is something I use often uh, when speaking uh, about the imperialist agenda, like when they when when when, you know, with, with the project of, of colonization and genocide throughout uh, North America. 
Um, the, uh, the tactic was particularly with Native nations um, to divide us uh, because, you know, when we are not united, we are weaker. And so that's a practice that has been ingrained uh, into BIPOC society still, because we are still having issues uh, getting out of our silos and working together. Like for instance, even the black and indigenous and Latino, Lat Latino, Latina community, we should be like completely in solidarity um, in overcoming white supremacy uh, in this country, but yet uh, we are still very siloed. Um, and then, so the divide and conquer uh, mentality um, really like rests within our communities, also within our individual minds. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about like um, embodying, you know, like a lot of colonial ideology still, um, a lot of uh, issues with lateral oppression, a lot of issues with um, uh, power, you know, power hungry people, like, you know, ego, ego things like that, you know, because um, getting attention to our causes is so difficult sometimes that like we end up um, fighting uh, for, you know, the mic, if you will, um, like, and funding and like just any kind of attention on how we can make things, make it, make, you know, think, make things better. But what it, en what it ends up doing is like continuing that agenda of divide and conquer. And so what I was trying to say is like, um, yes, there was a lot of issues with like this commission at the very beginning, but like we can't just blame ourselves for that. We also have to understand that there's a white supremacist agenda at play that is still like not just within our societal, you know, um, out, you know, our society, but also like in, within our minds and with individuals. Like when we also work together, we're also fighting like white supremacy within ourselves. And so like that's why um, I don't want to not. Uh, give these other commissioners uh, back pay because um, I, I, I do believe that there is a much larger issue that we're fighting here. Understood. I'll follow that up, uh, Commissioner Cliff, in answering your two questions. Uh, I think when we talk back pay, there are two pieces of it. Uh, for those who are current, back pay is we started working in April. So that's um, assuming that's what would be addressing as the newer members. Then there is also the prepos. Then the other thing about uh, Commissioner Sakawis is calling it divide and conquer. And uh, for those of us who have, uh, who are coming in from Africa, uh it's a uh, it's divide and rule the same thing and it called that's the way they were able to conquer a whole continent and still able to, in colonialism and their slavery dividing you up and conquering you and apathy even if they are fewer in numbers they are able to do that and then of course when we end up here it's still continuing in africa that's new colonialism and uh, when we end up here uh, the divide and rule is still going on. And yeah, always having to be aware as we do things and know that it could be coming to play, to be aware and alert so that uh, you, can, you can be aware and question yourself and reflect, is this what is going on? And if it's going on, what do we do? And I think this very moment, that's what we are doing. I yield. Commissioner Harris. Yeah, I can go. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed that I talk about, you know, with Native Americans and things like that, um, I'm I'm a diverse person. Um, you know, um, I'm African American by birth, you know, but you know, I have Native I have Native American in my blood as well. So kind of, you know, three fourths African American and hard Native American. So the one of the things that I want to say about, you know, people talking about all oh, the commissioners of oh, should they get paid for the time that they did and the things that they did, that was a tough time. That was a really, really tough time. You know, people, you know, that were that were around for that time, that was a really tough time. We dealt with a whole bunch of things, you know, like scrutiny from the city. We deal with scrutiny from the public. Right now, we when we call for uh, public comments, we don't really have any public comments because they don't want to talk anymore. 
you know, but during the times when we first started, uh, Muhammad was there, Amir was there, a few other people were there. So we 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 just tried our best. So um, what I would say with back pay, um, it doesn't matter about back pay, but we should get we should get, we should, we should get compensated. And I don't know if I need to call a motion or something or to get this you know get this part over with, but um. We need back pay and we need to get paid for what we did because some of the people that um, have put these commissions together, they're, they have money. They're well off, you know, they, you know, they don't have any problems in life, you know, because they just talk and they just say things. And, but, you know, the people that's on this commission I don't know how they are, or how they live, or how they live their life, or whatever. But me being on this commission, um, it it like it took a lot of hours out of my life, you know, like for my children and stuff like that, and you know, being on this commission, it took it just took a lot of hours out of my life, you know. So with that, I'm yield the floor. All right. Commissioner Johnson go first and then I'll just kind of explain the ones I've had checked and then what we can kind of do going forward on this item. I appreciate everybody uh, and explaining things on how they feel with things. I, I really do. Uh, and I, I, I stand by what I, what I, what I said about those who have already been here and been on. When it comes down to when I joined in uh, on in April, or from that point on after, I mean, I, I am not worried about anything from before when I wasn't on there getting paid with that at all. Uh, but I like I do appreciate you guys as well because I watched you guys go through uh, a struggle, and at the same time, I was it really disturbed me when everything fell apart because I felt like it was all going to dissolve possibly and never come back. And that worried me a lot. And I, I, it made me very happy to see that you guys were continuing on and you were pushing through. And I feel like we are as a unit better when we're all working together on the same team, fighting for the same cause because we're all fighting for each other and for our, our fellow, you know, uh, brothers and sisters out there. I just, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I love that Marine talk in there. I, I felt it a little <sighs> bit. It was good. That was good. I just wanted to say that before Mo started speaking, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I just wanted to say real quick in terms of the items I've checked. So what I was doing while we were speaking was just checking all the formula boxes and everything, making sure everything was typed out correctly so that there weren't any mistakes in here with any of the additions. Um, and then also, so the boxes I've checked were the ones that it sounded like everyone was pretty much okay with. So I just wanted to get uh, like um, to hear from anyone if there was anything against that at this time. And then we can just focus more so on these four items that aren't checked. And then from there, I guess we could just move towards a vote that way to make this process a little more concise and to move on to the next items. This is uh, Commissioner Dillard. And I just had a thought um, for transportation. I think we could um, boost that up a little bit just in case we have more people that might need um, specific needs for that. Um, and we do have the money for it. And then uh, yeah, definitely. originally I was thinking on the materials and miscellaneous, um, that doesn't seem like enough for food or whatever, but I guess that would be under our subcommittee budget totals. Um, or I, I just think that number could be a little bit higher, but I don't know what materials and miscellaneous would be. I think you have the budget so for it. It's multiplied I think by should... five per subcommittee. I think you should do okay. 500 for materials and 500 for transportation. Mm, okay. For transportation, 500? Or do you think, I, 
I think a thousand's actually a really good amount. I just don't know if it's going to be that much, but I'm envisioning like vouchers for like taxis or um, mm-hmm. like uh, Uber and Lyft vouchers, but I, I don't know. I was yeah. thinking 500 um, would be good, but if a thousand's what you guys think would be good, then I, I agree. Anything over, I guess we could use towards other stuff too. I mean, if it's easier for us to have the money and not use it, I'd rather have too much, uh, which is a good place to be. And I've never been in that situation than to need more. So if we can boost it to a thousand for both transportation materials, I don't see why not. Agreed. Yeah, let's just make materials slash miscellaneous a thousand as well. Um, I, I definitely, I mean, I know that we're probably before we submit this to council, I keep writing this down. It's, I just want to make sure that we send it to them with them knowing like this is probably going to change. Like it, these aren't mounts aren't exact. Um, so. Um, this is Commissioner Harris. Uh, I think it's time for a vote maybe. Or I just want to make sure we go over these ones in orange and uh, the stipend before we vote on anything, because these are ones that we didn't really touch on today. But I think they'd be a little quicker. I just wanted to explain the videographer thing of as well of like, this is another situation to just have money set aside for it in case we go that route. But we can also not include it this time and just look to do it in a future meeting. I just wanted to set something aside in case we did need to go with the videographer at some point. And for advertising outreach, a big reason I have this in here is um, in terms of needing to pay for social media posts to be to be boosted or whether there's a need to pay for a social media manager or something of that sort. I have this in here because I have always been disappointed with uh, the, you know, the city's level of outreach for certain things that are related to BIPOC individuals. So I just have this money included in here to assist with that. I mean, for one, if we just look at the excluded workers fund issues and getting uh, support for that and getting proper representation in those um, in those surveys. That's a big reason why I think we need to have this advertising outreach budget line item. And this is Commissioner this- Harris. I will speak out about the video of the, the, the video of the thing. Uh, I don't know. I need, we, I think we need to get that solved. Uh, that may be um, for a next meeting or something like that, but that part of it, we need to get that figured out. So. Again, I do have an individual that is wanting to do it um, and that is also asked uh, more so, I mean, has also said that he would be willing to do uh, 90 minutes of fully edited video for uh, for that $4,000 fee. So that when I say 90 minutes of edited video, the edited like after everything is shot, it would be 90 minutes in total length. So that would include probably closer to five hours or so of actual filming. Um, so whatever is actually needed there. Um, I did look at other rates that videographers usually take and it's very, very, very low compared to anything anyone else would, would do. So we do have the option to go through RFPs for it as well, but just wanted to make that known. This is Commissioner Dillard. Again, um, I'm agree with you, um, Mo, that that's very low. So if we have the money, I suggest we give this person what they're worth. 90 minutes for $4,000 sounds like you're getting paid less than minimum wage as a, a lay person who does video. So if we wanted to boost that, I'm okay with it. And also with the advertising, we have the money. We should boost it as well. Um, it's better to have it on there and um, not use it than to need to go over, in my opinion. And yeah, advertising outreach would include things like flyers as well, and um, also helping to get those flyers around the community or like those like billboards people would like put on top of their cars to drive through or just like paying people to go door to door to knock on those doors. You know, some of the things I wish were done a little more essentially. Do we have transportation for necessary participants on here twice for a reason? Did I miss that? 
Yes. Yeah, so one is for the subcommittees, but I also have one included for you know, general meetings because um, because there could be a difference between uh, those actual public meetings and let's say that there's an extra boost of people that are coming for a specific speaker or something of that nature. I just want to make sure that that's separated out and in here just in case. Got it. And the last thing is for the experts in training. The main thing I want to go over on this is that, so I've been looking through like consultant fees and things like that. So we have collaborators and consultants for certain subcommittees. But however, these two amounts, I just want to caution is that while that total is 36K and while it's listed in August and September, that does, I don't believe that that ties us to using it in only August, September. I rather just put them there in those values so we could just see them as bigger numbers and kind of realize that this would be more extensive training or like if people needed to go to some kind of training course or something like that. And also just to give the idea of that we would rather get these types of training sooner rather than later before we like fully get into anything and everything we're looking to do. So I just wanted to hear if anyone had any um, pushback on any of those items. Okay, doesn't look like it. Um, I will hand it off over to Commissioners uh, Johnson, first and foremost, and then Commissioner Gathua right after. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, I just was saying, uh, I think the advertising is extremely important. So uh, I, I definitely agree with uh, even, I wouldn't mind putting up more on it because we, I mean, we have to, we have to get people involved. That's, the, that's our whole point. So, uh, if yeah, if need be, I I would say go even harder with that advertising advertisement outreach. That's all. We we have to make sure that we bring people in and get people as involved as possible. So that's all I have. Okay, I'll go, Commissioner Wangui. Uh, thank you for shedding light on all those uh, three items that were in orange. I want to zero in on videography. And uh, mine is a question with the, uh, the videographer is for, for use for what we're doing as a whole commission, if we need um, a videographer, or it's also as we are doing some individual work for example i um uh as we for example as i collect information from the disaggregated community uh, when we disaggregate a community uh a group uh yeah i guess that's what i'm asking or whether do i go and look for another my own videographer or it all comes down there so at this time, from what I'd spoken to him on, is that there'd be a short video series of just a few minutes of each commissioner kind of talking about their goals for the TRC, why they joined. And then the more like 60 minute portion uh, would be anyone from the community looking to have their truths actually recorded and um, put in video format. Um, but then after that, you know, there is always the opportunity to lock either the same person up or more people. Uh, as videographers going forward, I just wanted to get at least one type of series and and um, some amount of time frame of things out there, so that people kind of understand a little more of what we're doing and what's going on. Because we, you know, we all probably still get those questions of what exactly do you guys do, what are you trying to do, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you for explaining again. Because now that you you explain, I remember you explained it during the last meeting. Thank you for going over it again. Oh, no, no problem at all. Yeah. Um, this is Commissioner Dillard. I was just wanting to go back to the videographer and say if we can increase the um, amount that we have on there, I'd like to see 2000 um, or even the 3500 to match the ad ad advertising. Thank you. No problem. And yeah, again, that just gives us the opportunity to either lock up more video time or more videographers if needed. 
So just want to clarify once again for everyone is in the public as well, these amounts in here are what we are allowed to use in terms of what we ask the city for for expenditures. So if certain amounts are not exhausted, just like how it happens with the city in some ways, those funds can always be reapportioned. Did we allow for public comment at the beginning of uh, this agenda item and there wasn't anyone that raised their hand? Um, I'd, I guess that would be a Stephanie question. I don't remember if we did, but we can ask for it again now because I do know we've had it on a few other, but yeah, I'd like to hear what the public has to say before the final vote. Stephanie. Yeah, I haven't seen any hand raised from the um, attendees. Okay. So then I did ask each person on the commission or at least the ones I could get to what they were looking for on the stipend. And I know some of you had said that you were willing to go with uh, whatever the rest of the commissioners had gone with. Um, I heard from one individual on the commission that the absolute lowest they were willing to go before they would probably resign is 250 a month. Um, I, and, but the amount that I was really hearing um, was more of a floor of amount of 800 and a ceiling of either 1000 or 1200. And I just wanted to say personally that I prefaced all those conversations with that. My actual proposal was that we each did the amount of 1000 per month that you are on the commission as I see it as that stipend being something that you can use on transportation to meetings um, as we go to public meetings sometime in the future, or as well, if you're needing to go to someone's house to, you know, speak to them in private on something or go to someone's house for a private meeting or a subcommittee going somewhere together, or as well, if you're just needing to pay some bills or if you're wanting to donate to some cause, or if you're needing to pay for your internet to be able to do these Zoom meetings, your phone as well to keep doing the phone calls, just have having that discretion um, so that you rather have more money to do as needed rather than less. Is there anyone that it would be against that $1,000 uh, per month per commissioner um, and would like to see it adjusted or would we like to have any motions on votes? I'm not hearing anyone against it, but just wanted to just make clear for everyone as well. Um, I personally cannot make the motions. Uh, so if there is anyone that wanted to make a motion, um, then it would have to be someone else on the commission uh, to, you know, pass the budget forward and then another person to uh, second that, or if there is a further conversation that's needed to be had, then we can do that as well. This Commissioner Johnson, I make a motion for a vote. And I will second that. Just to be clear, we're voting on the stipend or the entire budget? I'm assuming it's the entire budget, if I had right. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Thank and you. And through what time period? Clifton. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, 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 Clifton, you made the motion. I think that you should uh, tell us through what time period and if it's for the budget versus the stipend, please. I was going to say uh, I was voting for the stipend. Uh, that's what I thought he was just talking about. And then from there to the full budget, I feel like the full budget, I thought we were still kind of not exactly completely squared away when it came down to that. But the stipend wise, I, I thought you had already made that decision a while back ago, so. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement on the stipend, but okay, can you, um, nobody had said anything when Mohammed asked about other concerns. So uh, what are your concerns with the budget? I personally uh, don't really, as of right now, from what I'm looking at, have any other concerns when it comes down to the budget. I uh, just wasn't sure what else we might have to uh, go through or possibly uh, negotiate or discuss. That's all. 
and then Mohammed. I agree. Can you can you just clarify for the back pay on this budget before um, I make a motion? Um, thank you. Uh, so. So for the post TRC so clause. Members, yeah. Sorry. Okay, just, yeah, you say it. Oh, for the post TRC pause, that's just mo more so of, since that date in mid April as we'd gone forward. So the meetings that everyone had been in, so there would have been five of them, uh, not including today, because today would be included in that 1000 per month, um, with that being, you know, uh, this being the month of budget passing. So mm -hmm. essentially five meetings, 500 per meeting, and then that would have been 2500 per person, multiplying that by all nine people on the commission. But one thing that I do want to add as well is that we did sadly lose uh, Commissioner Navari Jackson as well after the first meeting, and she did attend the meeting, even though you know she does work two jobs and she was very busy. So I would she like to. She deserves to be paid the fullest, yeah. what the five hundred per meeting. I think is what we should go by. So five hundred dollars for every meeting that was attended. So she'll just get five hundred more than the other people. And then for the term of pre TRC pause, essentially just before the city council had made that vote to pause the TRC after um, being pressured by some individuals. Um, and that's $500 per meeting attended. So that would have been six meetings and then nine members of the commission. So that's how we're getting to that total of 27,000 there. Perfect, I just wanted to make sure that it was clarified at the very end, at least in the minutes. That's actually a good thing to put forward to clarify. So um, we had a, a motion and it was seconded. Um, Cliff, uh, it sounded like you landed on um, clarifying that your motion was to approve the stipend, um, or would you like to like expand that to approve the budget as a whole? Yeah, I second that one too. So. Uh, I would go with the stipend as of right now. That's how I, I, I would like the motion for the stipend. But we didn't need to vote on that, if that's okay. Like, I think that's we all agreed on it. There, yeah. Steph, it's, if, it, if the motion was put forth and seconded, do we have to do a vote or can we just withdraw it? Um, I could say, I would... I mean, if you're, you could do a vote, but if everybody's going to vote in the, the negative because you're just going to vote on the entire budget, um, I think that um, if Commissioner Johnson uh, feels comfortable, the, the motion can be withdrawn. And... Yeah, that's no problem. And I'm wondering whether are we going all the way to December as we make a decision? For well, us, yes. Yeah, so with how we had inflated certain things, I would like to go through December just okay. to ensure that we do have funds locked up through that point, because that would also take us through um, this next city council election where we do have two new city councilors coming in. So I don't want to possibly face the whole thing of, oh, going into the election, don't want to vote on these certain things or might get some pushback. I want to make sure that we do have these things locked up through at least the end of the year. But again, um, I didn't make the motion, so I just want to make sure that is clarified for uh, before the vote. Uh, this is Commissioner Ali. I'm going to make a motion to approve the budget uh, as is right now with the contingency um, or the knowledge that we may edit it, that knowledge going to the council. I second that. And Stephanie, can we um, com Commissioner Ali, do you mind um, putting the time frame just in the motion, just for clarity for the minutes? 
Oh, yeah. I apologize. Uh, this is Commissioner Ali. Uh, my motion is to approve this budget through December uh, with the knowledge that uh, we may have amendments to it for city council. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, Commissioner Ali? Yes. Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Sakawas? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, Before we move forward, um, Following up on the discussion um, pertaining to the budget, um, was there any uh, progress made on a, a press release that would accompany this budget proposal? There wasn't, but I'd like to also just wait to craft that a little more just because there were certain things that we did kind of add to it and change. Um, I think we we may want to just uh, take some time over these next two weeks to truly craft that. And then also, I don't feel like we owe the press an immediate explanation by any means. They can talk about it however they wish. You know, people, people can hate if they want, but at the end of the day, we explained ourselves. They can listen to the tapes if they want, and they can ask us directly. But I, but yeah, I do think we should try to do something at some point. Yeah, I, I would, I would definitely be open to um, working on writing something up. Um, the only person that I'm going to openly share it to that works for uh, any press is Dion Braxton. That's the only person I'm going to support uh, in the press currently. But I would be totally open to writing something that. Uh, <clears throat> kind of, I mean, not even need, not even that this needs justification, but just to work on that and probably have that ready, um, maybe even by like to later tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and I would like to offer my help to you, Amel, if you'd like it. This is Commissioner Dillard. Thanks again, to you both. Uh, I always say that I am there to read anything. Like I said, I do a lot of reading and grading mostly. So this is about the uh, this is the the budget press release, right? Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. got confused for a sec. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, if you need any help with any, I mean, I think it would be great because a lot of press releases have statements like quotes mm -hmm. from people. Um, I think if we took some good quotes from the things that we discussed here, like reasoning why we think it's important. Yeah, I was actually going to reach out to you specifically after this. To oh, get okay. Some, well, I mean, so, I think everybody's, uh, yeah, but I think everybody has said some pretty strong things. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah, like, you know, it doesn't have to be just one person's quote. I mean, like, we yeah. should insert like different people's like perspectives on this. I was actually going to say, I think Eric has said some really amazing things. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, about why uh, we need to be paid. And of course, you know, like anything I've said, you're welcome to use uh, in any of these recordings. But yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, it would be really nice. I mean, press releases can be short, press releases can be long. Um, I think it would be nice to have a quote from everybody. Um, because it shows the diversity um, and the um, uh, reasoning for more than just one person. And um, then the press can choose to like talk to more than just like one person. So it's not one person's burden. Um, yeah. And then uh, just make sure that the quotes aren't like very long, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, um, anyone um, who has my cell phone number, please feel free to text me a quote. Um, um, so um, I can go now. Um, this is Commissioner Harris. I can go now. Um, um, so one of the questions that I want to get cleared up is that is when do we get this money? How do we get this money? And then as far as the press thing, um, many people know in the community that surround me that, you know, I'm down and willing to do the press things and things like that. So, so if that's th those questions want to get answered, um, that's what I want to get answered is when do we get this money? How do we get this money? 
Um, if the press comes, um, I can do all the press things. Um, and one other question I got is when I do press things, um, how do I represent that? You know, like, do I say I'm speaking on my own or I'm speaking on behalf of the CRC? It would be in your best interest to say that you are only representing the views of yourself as an individual and you do not represent right. the views of any members of the TRC. Okay. Um, that is what I would do. Okay. That sounds good. I yes. propose a, a timeline then for um, us to... Um, I'll kind of speak with um, Amel and provide a statement that would be included in the press release. And then um, that press release be presented at our next public meeting and we can vote uh, for it to go out. Um, is Do you think that two weeks from now is like too long for a press release? I, 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 I do worry about that. I, I, just, I just have concerns that we, I, I want to approve the press release before it goes out, right? If it's yeah. going to be on the behalf of the commission. I'd say we could send quotes by this coming Monday and then look to get something in the press by next week on Friday by way of, I mean, we do have the subcommittees as well that we can Honestly, individually no talk. Mm -hmm. I want quotes by tomorrow morning oh. and I feel like it would be pretty easy to write something up. And I'm so sorry, but I can't do anything for the morning. Um, I'm going to be traveling, and actually, it's nine twenty-two at night. Like I have no, I have nothing in me to do right now. Like I'm, I'm also sick, by the way. I'm, um, I just came from quick care, so, um, yeah. I, I just don't know if I can get anything to you by the morning. I apologize. And I, 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 oh, sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner. Okay. Um, if I, you write I, I, something up, if you write something up, um, I'm willing to present it, you know, but this has to be a consensus, like what we want to write up and I can't, I'm not going to go out and say stuff that I feel I would rather have a consensus of people writing stuff up and then I can go out and say it. So, well, okay. I, before Steph, I'm going to give you the floor. Realistically speaking, anyone in this meeting right now could call or talk to press after this and tell them everything that we talked about and everything we approved and all of that right now. So I just want to go in thinking that um, and with bearing that in mind, I, I don't mind not having um, stuff done right away. I just, I, I don't think that, I mean, I guess, I don't know, maybe people will see it, the news on Monday and care because actually people have given a lot more interest in this TRC than I thought in the first place. But, um, Steph, do you want to chime in? Yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to provide some context and um, kind of a timeline. Um, one, if there's going to be a news release done, I mean, technically, nine of you should not be working on a news release in between meetings because that's gonna be a violation of open open meeting, right? So the, the question is, can a subcommittee form that could do a news release, but then how do the other five people approve of it, right? Without violating open meeting. So I, I think unless you're going to make a motion that delegates a subcommittee to write a, a news release that everybody will sign off on, you know, without seeing it, you're kind of gonna run into problems. I also um, wanted to mention in, in terms of Commissioner Harris, I kind of asked about next steps. So the, the budget um, would get submitted to the city council. The city council only meets one additional time in July and one time in August. So they meet July 27th and then they meet August 17th. And so if you're, um, since you've approved the budget, it, it really should be part of the July 27th city council meeting date, which means that that commission, excuse me, that city council packet would get posted on Thursday, July 22nd. So if you're looking at a, a, a news release, the, the, the general public um, really wouldn't have access to, to your budget or what details are in it until that packet comes out from the city council on the 22nd. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of um, because I'll have to do a resolution for your budget um, 
uh, recommendation to the city council for that meeting on July 27th, unless you choose to um, defer it until the August 17th meeting date. But again, those are the only two upcoming meetings that the city council has planned. As, as a part of the budget um, recommendation to the city council, um, you also will need to consider who's going to present that. Is it, is it gonna be the chair, vice chair, just the chair, you know, kind of the delegation of commissioners. Um, if you're familiar with city council meetings, you know that when items are on the agenda, there's, you know, a discussion and usually a presentation by staff. In this case, it would be members or a member of the TRC commission. So that's just kind of something to think about when you're looking at dates. Generally speaking, because you are a city board commission, the, the what you're calling press releases, they call news releases, but, but same difference. Um, usually those would be sent out by the, um, you would send it to me and then I would send it to the department that releases those. And so it would go out on a general uh, city news release, but I, I don't know. It was kind of a lot of information in, in a little amount of time, but if anybody has any questions or if I need to go back over dates, just let me know and I would be um, more than happy to do that. But Commissioner Harris, to answer your question in terms of funding and um, you know when it becomes available, it would need to, you know, would be after the, it goes in front of the, the city council for their approval. Yeah, I was just mentioning that because, um, you know, I know a lot of commission members did a lot of media things and I'm more familiar with the media. So, I, I, you know, if it was a statement to be made, you know, I kind of could be the person to make that statement. So, you know, I know that Muhammad and Cavo and a couple other people have done media things and, I, you know, I have a lot of media connects. So I would think that, you know, me making the statement would be, would make it, you know, you know, and Emil has a lot of media contacts as well. So with that, I yield the floor. Uh, Mel, before you go, I would just prefer that one of, yeah, one of you guys, uh, someone else on the commission does it. I don't really feel like speaking to the media on this one, um, but Mel, I'll yield the floor to you. Um, so I'm thinking since, uh, Steph made that great point of the public agenda is not going to be out for the um, council meeting until later in July. I say um, during our subcommittee meetings, um, we can come up with um, some ideas or general statements to put together um, in the next week. And then I can have one ready for the next commission meeting. Uh, that we can all approve. Uh, if that if that's something that everyone's okay with working on and doing. That sounds good. Okay, sweet. I see the general consensus is yes. I wrote it down. I um, just wanna move on to the next agenda item if we're all ready to. One last thing I just wanted to clarify as well is that if we could do a quick vote as well on um, the timing of each dispersal of payments, because my suggestion would essentially be so if we're doing it for each month on the commission, the best way to likely do it would be the first um, the first Friday of the following month. I, some, something tells me that I don't think that we have a choice on that, do we, Stephanie? I, I think that um, is probably um, something that if the city council approves the, the budget, that could be determined at that time. Yeah. Okay. So then we can all kind of talk about that when the time comes. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's move on to the next item then. So we do have the item number eight, July 22nd meeting date discussion on whether We'll be doing it on Zoom or in person. So I definitely do want to give the community the opportunity to speak on this one. Uh, if there is anyone uh, in the public that would like to have any input on this, 
So this is just essentially whether we would do the next meeting on Zoom or in person um, at one of the city's sites, such as I believe the options would be the senior center and then somewhere else. Um, actually, um, it I have reserved the council chambers. The council chambers. Okay. Yeah. Now, because you're still meeting um, every other Thursday, there might be some Thursdays where we're across the hall in the Helen conference room, but you know, you would still be at City Hall. It's just, you would either be on the left or right side, depending on the the, the day. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's, and, and one more thing that I wanna add um, in front of any community comment is just to provide some context for this. The, the governor um, has extended the ability for boards and commissions within the state of Iowa to still meet remotely through July 25th. Um, in her last correspondence, um, she strongly indicated that she probably would not be extending that any further. And so if you choose to meet on the, 20, the 22nd virtually, you, your next meeting in August, the, the 5th, I would believe it is, the 5th or 6th, that, that you know, would not be an, an option anymore. You, you would be required to meet in, in person. So it's, it's really just this kind of last meeting in July in terms of whether you want to meet at City Hall or if you want to meet virtually. Thank you. I think as uh, BIPOC folks, we should err on the side of caution. Um, you know, there's still another strain out there that is spreading and Iowa from the get go has been ridiculously uh, irresponsible. Um, we didn't give Kim Reynolds nickname COVID Kim uh, for no reason. And I think that these Zoom meetings have been quite successful um, because I think that people um, are like using the, uh, the, how do I say it? Like in our ways we have circles, you know? Like, you know, we give people um, time to speak simply because we can't uh, necessarily go off people's, you know, facial expressions. And so, um, I, I would like to continue on these meetings for as long as we can, uh, simply because of, again, new strains. Uh, and then also because I want to be an example for how things can be successful remotely uh, until we are, you know, until everyone is vaccinated and until um, we resolve these issues in our state, particularly with a, a government uh, that is trying to do the exact opposite of like the right thing. So we need to do, we need to push harder in the other direction for that reason. This is Commissioner Dillard and I'd just like to say, I um, completely agree with what Commissioner Nobis just said. And also um, if it's just a lot more convenient for the, the community members to join us as well at this time, so. I would vote to stay virtual for the next meeting as well. What I'm hearing it sounds like we're going to probably just go with that Zoom meeting again for the next meeting. And then uh, from what Stephanie had said as well, we do have, oh, Cliff, go ahead. Just a quick question, Does uh, if I heard correctly, uh, future meetings, no matter what, have to be in person, correct? Unless the governor extends it past the July 25th um, deadline. Okay. Yeah, just wondering, that's all. Um, well, if it's, if the meetings do have to be in person starting August 5th, are there going to be um, Zoom options for people who can't attend in person? I think that it's important that we at least have like, I'll sacrifice my MacBook and we can have a Zoom that's just facing us where people can, you know, raise their hands like this or something. Yeah, so my understanding from the, the procedure currently in place, the, the meetings would be recorded, but they would not be live streamed. I, I can definitely follow up um, for your next meeting, but I, I, I know that they kind of prefer um, conformity with, with all boards and commissions. But my understanding as of um, 
this evening is, is that it, they would not, Zoom would no longer be an option. They would just be recorded and played later. And is that an Iowa law or a that, Iowa City law? The, well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a law. I would I would say it's the the procedure or the protocol that the city has put in place for when boards and commissions return to meeting in person. I think that's problematic. I just want to add a point that it's I was just going to say can elderly people are still at home, you know, people with immune um, compromised, uh, you know, uh, systems are still at home. You know, even my own son uh, is, you know, has asthma that is at home. Also, I do want to say as an indigenous person, our peoples had the highest rates of COVID in the country. And we had to uh, uh, block off our nations with our own people, with our own security to make sure that outsiders did not enter our reservations. I do work with our people and other communities like besides Iowa City. And I just like want to say that that makes me angry. I'm not saying that on a personal level, like I don't feel like uh, okay about it because like, yes, I'm vaccinated and I'm, you know, CDC says it's fine to blah, 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 to be doing things. But like also uh, we are a pillar for the community and we have to be showing um, uh, the best uh, possible practice that we can. And if we can avoid uh, meeting in person, then we are also showing that like technology works fine for the interim until it really is safe for everybody to go out. Um, we are excluding like portions of the community um, because of this. And mm -hmm. I absolutely uh, want to take issue with the city because they refuse to uh, live stream this. I was, you know, yeah, Mohammed. I think it might have been live streamed for this I, past city meeting. I, I, I mean, this is this is the best that I can do this evening is that I can talk to the folks at the city and I can report back at your next meeting. Yeah, I was. Um, just I, I understand everyone's concerns, you know, so it's not it's not something that I have the authority to, to give a green light on. Right. Yeah. But, but I, I have no problem in getting more information. And um, based upon that information, your meeting on the 22nd can still be virtual and you don't have another meeting until August 5th. Thank that you. What said? And, yeah, and, so, and, then, and so, you know, you can kind of form next steps at that point if, you know, if it's unfavorable. Um, uh, thank you. To the I really commission, appreciate but, that. Yeah, but I just, I just want to make it clear that it's not like Stephanie Bowers is saying that. I mean, it's just. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I just think you were. No, no, no. I'm saying that if this is the city's, if this is the city's, uh, uh, if this is the city's <laughs> policy, then like we need to take issue with it. Yeah, because was, as BIPOC be... folks, for instance, we have we have a, a responsibility to communities that are already facing the highest rates of COVID in the COVID in the country, and so like we need to be extra diligent and show like a good example of how to um, be safe with uh, COVID. Also, because this is coming on us so last minute, I do want to bring up the issue of childcare. Um, and there will be people that might need that uh, compensation then. And then I know we've already agreed on the budget, but um, this just made me realize that that's actually a really important aspect of this. For instance, uh, my organization, Great Plains Action Society, we never um, uh, make an employee uh, do something without providing adequate childcare um, for them so that they can uh, attend events because we all know that uh, lack of child care is a massive block uh, in BIPOC communities. And y'all pay well. They pay very, Yeah, we very, pay our people well. Very, very um, well. <laughs> I just want to say that we do have the materials miscellaneous line on there as well that can be used for things such as that. And yeah. if we are doing meetings in places such as downtown, we do have the recreation centers and things nearby. Where we could use that to kind of um, have a larger group um, child care session in a way with the gyms and everything of that nature. Yeah. And we also want to make sure that the people who are taking care of the children and the children are safe and the children have access to adequate PPE and, you know, all of that stuff too, because um, I, I know for a fact, my mom is 100 she's certified to take care of children and all of that legally able to ever all of that would definitely be willing to do that in her spare time but I would also want to make sure that my mother is protected if she's going to be doing that um, the other thing is oh sorry Emma I thought you were done no I just I 
I was going to say one more thing about, um, Oh, and sorry, Cliff. Uh, I was going to say one more thing about the whole city protocol thing. I just, I, um, and, and I can touch back base with you about this, Stephanie, if it's like protocol, if it's like written somewhere, like, is it like protocol that's like written? Because I don't think that that's fair. And I think that if we wanted the city to get pushback for that, we could very easily make it happen because it's not fair. And other people have already complained about this since last night's council meeting and since the Des Moines council meetings have started. And I just wanted to quickly add, sorry, I wanted to say one more point when I was speaking. Um, you said that this meeting will be in the um, uh, elderly center. I'm sorry, what was the name of the center again? Oh. Um, no, it would be at City Hall in council chambers, and we, we should be able oh, to... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard that we're going to be the U U Kinem or whatever it's called. Um, the Yeah, so I apologize. I wanted to clarify okay. that. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so I want to go real quick. Um, that's a comment, you know. Um, so we talked about COVID-19 and how the people struggle with that stuff. Um, one of the things that I would share with people is that, like, um, and I had to share this before, but my wife, all of my children had COVID-19. I didn't get COVID-19. Um, it was that was a pretty bad time. So you need to go. Um, one thing I would say, you got to go get vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. My whole family is fully vaccinated. So in-person meetings would be a good thing, I think, because in the past couple months, I've seen people that I haven't seen that I've talked to over Zoom calls or debated with over Zoom calls and things like that. And seeing those, seeing those people in person has been a really great thing. So everybody, you know, needs to get vaccinated. Um, as far as the public safety and the health safety thing, I, like I understand that, but I want to have in-person meetings again. So, well, not again, but just have an in-person meeting because we've, you know, it's, it's a couple people on here that we've spent the whole winter, fall, having discussions and debates over Zoom calls. We haven't met in person really. So with that, I yield. And we do have Cliff's hand raise. Uh, I, I was just uh, trying to remember if we were allowed to still call things in. Or, uh, I thought that was a, thought that was a thing where we can uh, still call in if we can't make it in or anything along those lines. Is that true or no? Yeah, that's correct. If a commission member is unable to participate, as long as we can set up a speaker phone. Um, if you watch the city council meeting the other day, there was a member who wasn't there and they were just on a speaker phone. So that's correct. So if worst case scenario, if somebody, if somebody can't make it in, uh, a phone call in can still work from sounds of it. So. Uh, I, I personally, uh, I deal with people all the time and <laughs> it might sound crazy, but I, I have people actually spit in my face by accident, just from dealing with people so much. I, not uh, just by accident, it's not on purpose, of course, but uh, uh, I wear a mask still. <laughs> I have no problem wearing a mask. Uh, and I, I, I think it is a I think it's helpful to see people eye to eye, right in person. And I, I understand the concerns, I definitely do. And I, I sympathize completely when it comes down to uh, everybody who is uh, dealing with any kind of issues because of COVID or uh, I, just, I just feel like in person is almost, uh, it's a, it's important. It's important. I feel like it, it, it through the computer, people lose humanity, or they they get a a different sense and a different feel. And if we are able to look each other eye to eye, to eye and really empathize with each other, hopefully we can find better solutions a little bit faster. Uh, that's just personally how I feel. I actually, like I said, I feel the opposite. I feel like people are using like the real like talking circle method here in this space. 
because <laughs> people actually have to pause and think before they speak um, because there's like that, you know, that delay where you have to like see if anybody else is going to. So I've actually really appreciated um, this method of communication because um, it reminds me of like when I'm on clubhouse with my people or in space, like, you know, public spaces with my people, like this is how we do business. And um, so that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. So it sounds to me like, yeah, at this point, you know, the Zoom meeting, but what we can do in the meantime for going forward is, you know, talk to some of the city officials, get a little more clarity, see what's going on and see if there are any extra accommodations we can get put in or any policy changes we can have made. If that sounds good to everyone. Um, so we do have the community topics for discussion. I do want to give the public again the opportunity to speak on any of these topics uh, prior to us uh, continuing. So we have the bans on critical race theory for one, removing monuments to white supremacy, and also the South District Neighborhood Association on there. So if anyone from the public would like to comment on any of these items, please raise your hand and you will get your opportunity to speak. I'm not seeing any hands at the moment. So it looks like we will get this uh, over to the commissioners. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you, Commissioner Novus, as well, for sending some topics in. And just want to remind everyone on the commission again, uh, feel free at any time to send topics in. Um, it was just a situation of she said that she wanted some topics on there and no questions asked. Get at it. I mean, I'm pretty much like that with the agenda. I'm not going to stop you from getting something on there you want um, you want discussed. So specifically what this agenda item is for. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we can actually combine A and B because they are essentially one and the same. Um, so as of uh, July 1st, uh, there is a ban in effect on critical race theory in the state of Iowa. Iowa is one of 17 states that has banned critical race theory. Um, and in my opinion, uh, it is a, um, ongoing attempt to continue Trump's legacy of white supremacy in this country. Not that this country hasn't been supporting, um, uh, you know, a, a white supremacist agenda since um, its foundation, but that um, there's people that are really angry right now with the fact that uh, Trump is not in presidency. Our uh, governor is an example of that. And I feel that is absolutely necessary uh, as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, to take this issue on uh, because we cannot stand uh, quiet on this topic. If that means that we only release a press release stating our opposition to it, that's great. Um, if we start a subcommittee on it, that's great. Um, the other thing that like really works into it is the um, abolishment of monuments to white supremacy in Iowa, which is something that I have been working on for many years in this state and have finally made headway uh, to write a bill um, uh, with a, a legislator uh, to, uh, you know, to actually move on with this process, which is like massive. And I'm really excited to do that work. Um, I think that we can uh, make it more effective uh, if the city of Iowa City and possibly Johnson County also like does their own initiative to also like to um, keep teaching critical race theory to oppose uh, the, the state's uh, ban and then also to remove monuments to white supremacy in the city of Iowa City and possibly Johnson County. These are huge asks that I'm making right now. Um, but I just wanted to put it out there so that we can begin the conversation um, because I, I love that we are taking the time to set a foundation for this amazing commission uh, with, you know, salaries, with uh, uh, the, uh, the contractor that we're bringing on, all these other things. But I want to get into the meat of the matter. And that is like, since like seriously taking on uh, a very problematic government uh, in this state and uh, taking on like past atrocities, which is why we're called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission so that we can uh, make a real difference uh, with what the meaning of uh, this, this commission is. Thank you. So that was A and B. <laughs> um, I had my hand up first then Commissioner Traore, then Commissioner Harris, then Johnson, I believe. Um, but my question is, 
because I am oblivious. Uh, Sakawas, we, I, I wasn't aware that we had white supremacist monuments in Johnson County. Um, I couldn't say if there are any. Um, I do know that, the, what's the guy that's downtown? Um, I was just going to say, I was, I was yeah. going to say if there was any, I know they'd be downtown. <laughs> the guy in the suit. That. The guy in the suit um, that stands like on the, I think it's on Lynn and Washington. Weber, I think. Yeah, so that guy is a white supremacist, just so you all know. Um, also a school named after him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so not only monuments to white supremacy, but names and mascots. Um, I know that the city of Marion took on that issue, um, geez, about six months ago. Um, Westwind's uh, nonprofit organization hit me up. Uh, I think it's Cersei Stumbo that like runs that and asked me for my input on that issue. Um, this is something that like I've been working on for about like, you know, well, many years actually. And then very like, very much so the past three, it's been a huge issue for me. So um, like, you know, at the Capitol building, there was a bust of like Christopher Columbus who was a rapist uh, and a slave trader and then like never stepped foot on the actual continent of North America. And so like, why does he have to be here uh, in Iowa? And then there's like a whole like 40 foot mural um, in the Iowa State Capitol building um, of the depiction of uh, Manifest Destiny. Um, I think it's a Lynn County courthouse that actually has murals of natives being removed from the state of Iowa. And then there's my uh, piece de resistance, like I don't know how else to say it, but it's the, the piece that's like on the west terrace of the Capitol building that is the friendly Indian showing the way to two white uh, settler invaders um, to a new home pointing west. And the Indian is sitting dejected, like in my opinion, like at their feet. And this is like a huge monument, like it's like, like 30 feet tall um, uh, on the west side of the, the Capitol building. And so um, as like, you know, we can't just be focused on Iowa City. Yes, like we are like definitely like trying to make change here, but we can also take issue with like larger Iowa, um, uh, uh, larger Iowa uh, issues as well um, because they affect us uh, in our spaces. And so the, uh, you know, DC just banned uh, monuments to white supremacy and they will be removing them. Um, the state of Colorado uh, just banned uh, racist mascots. So I think that as a small city, we can begin that process uh, very easily here. And I think that should be a priority for us uh, because if you ban critical race theory, you are spitting upon everything that the Truth and Reconciliation Committee is doing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. Um, the reason why these two go together is because um, critical, Kim Reynolds said, critical race theory is problematic because it depicts people or it defines people based on their gender, their race or their sex. And we need to judge people based on their character. Now, if that is the case, then why would the state of Iowa put up busts of Columbus, who is a rapist and a, a, a murderer and a slave trader? So if we're gonna judge people by their character, then why would the state of Iowa want that on their grounds? Why would the state of Iowa want a falsified example of genocide on their grounds? Why would they want a depiction of manifest destiny on their grounds because it does not it is not the best character that they are putting forward. In fact, I argue and I will argue in the bill that we're going to write that it is actually hate speech and it deters people of color, uh, BIPOC folks from being in those spaces because it makes us feel highly uncomfortable and hated and it reminds us of genocide and slavery and triggers trauma. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to add as well, um, I'm very happy that you did reach out to add these items to uh, our agenda for today. It was, I felt the same way when they had voted on that bill. And I had decided at that moment that um, I would do everything that I can to ensure that Kim Reynolds does not have another term in office. So since then, um, 
I'd want to say thank you to Janice Weiner, who did help me get in touch with Ross Smith, who is currently running uh, for the uh, governor. I did get the opportunity to meet him a few weeks ago, and some of the other Iowa House Democrats um, had some harsh criticisms for them, but it was all out of I need them to actually do something worthwhile so that they can beat her. Um, I would be more than willing to try to facilitate some um, introductions between yourself and people looking to run for office as well to ensure that they do hear you out and um, they do try to get some more of those policies going sooner rather than later. Uh, other than that, when it comes to, um, you know, on the national stage, I do know that uh, Ross Wilburn as well did reach out to me. So I actually grew up on the same street as him when he was Iowa City mayor and uh, his daughter as well went to school with myself and Amel, but they get in touch with him recently and, you know, they're going to be having people running for Senate and things like that coming through here. The big reason I did get on the TRC, or at least I, that I applied, was seeing that the date and the timing that we are going to be finishing, if we do, when we do this right, every candidate that comes through Iowa City does truly get to see what, every, what the people here value. And it really gets to be a cohesive uh, framework for them to know this is how you do get people to come together and this is how you do uh, make change. So I think we have a lot of power in that sense and that we truly can drive change, not just here and in this county, but in this state and hopefully in the country. And I yield the floor with that. I think Cliff and uh, Chastity wanted to speak. You can go first if you want, Chastity. Go ahead, Cliff. I you were before me. It's fine. I I thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, when it comes down to A and B, both uh, uh, the bans on critical race theory and removing monuments of white supremacy, that is literally our job. That is our. We need to be all over that. Uh, I feel like there is. I mean, <laughs> to me, it seems like common sense uh, to teach the right thing about our history. The only way we can move forward is by first recognizing that there's a problem in the first place. And if we constantly brush everything under the carpet, I don't understand how we're gonna get anywhere at all. There's no reason why we shouldn't have and I'm also glad that this was brought up as well. And I thank you for bringing it up because it was definitely on my mindset and I just didn't get it in in time or I, I this was definitely on my mind. So uh, I wasn't familiar about the monuments of white supremacy that were here in Iowa City. I wasn't aware of that at all. There's well. a Confederate monument in Iowa, by the way. I, I just I also no wanted idea. to add that. And no idea, but I, I feel like anything else along those lines, that is a major problem if we are trying to unify our country and bring us together. It is gonna be ugly and it does not sound good to everyone, but that's, it's, if the truth is the truth is the truth. And the only way to make real positive change is to first recognize what it is. If we really wanna make a change and a difference, move forward from it, recognize what it is, address it, and then make the proper steps. That's kind of like, I, well, my, that is our job <laughs> to a certain level and degree to keep that ball rolling and get that ball rolling. So I, I'm glad you guys brought it up. Uh, and I, I think we need to do the best that we can to move on it. That's all. That's what I have. Um, this is Commissioner Dillard, and I just wanted to echo what everyone is saying, and thank you, Commissioner um, Sakawas, for bringing this up. Um, I was definitely thinking about it as much as everyone else was, and so I'm glad that you were able to um, send something out to Mohammed, um, especially as someone who was born and raised in Iowa, and is from Iowa. I just feel like, as a Black Iowan, um, for our governor to um, to to um, really stand behind this is like a spit. Is spitting in our faces, which is not surprising. But I just wanted to touch on the on the first thing you said 
um, about us maybe creating a, a new subcommittee for this because I would love for us to move forward on this as fast as possible. Um, if I don't know how we're going to go about that, but that's what I, I really heard when you when you first we're talking about this. Yeah, I'm thinking we definitely need a subcommittee for this. Like, this is exactly why we are here. And mm -hmm. like, we have basically been given the finger by the state just now. Like, this is like exactly what we are trying to avoid. And so what makes me nervous is that um, we might actually be affected by this ban. I don't know the, the intricacies of how far this goes. So we need to um, look into that uh, because it bans uh, any uh, state funded institution from teaching critical race theory and basically everything we do here is that. And I say that loud and proud because if they wanna come at us with it, then like we're here to make a massive noise for it. Okay, I can go. Uh, what I want to say, um, they talk about Christopher Columbus a whole bunch. Um, this is going to be a controversial statement that I make, but um, I have to make it. The Indians was here first. You know, um, they talk about Christopher Columbus, but the Indians, they were they were here first. Um, this is their native land. Um, I believe in that, and I will never let that go. Um, one thing that I didn't hear in this conversation is about how they changed the name of Johnson County from a different person. Um, Johnson County was named for a guy that was named Richard Mincer Johnson. He served as the vice president of the President Bear Buren, but they changed the name to Lulu Merrill Johnson, who was born in 1907 in a small time and in, in, in a small time, a, a small top town in Iowa City. She was one of the first people who got a PhD from the University of Iowa. And that's what they changed the name. That's what Johnson County represents right now. So I just wanna let that be out there and let people know. Um, an, another part about it, um, she earned a PhD from the university, which is now more commonly called the University of Iowa. She was a 10th black woman to earn a doctorate from the university according to the university biography uh, and, and so we need to recognize that we need to talk about that you know like she johnson county is now named for her right now you know um, she needs to be like some like something on the website or like a plaque somewhere um i don't know if it's i that's a good question i don't know if it's that but they changed the name because of people were were, were, were having concerns is why is it named after of, of, of a white person and and she was born into slavery. Oh, I'm sorry. Know? I apologize. Can you re like do you are you saying that what is who is Johnson County named after? Um Richard Mentor Johnson. Oh, okay. Who served as a vice president under the under the president Martin Van Buren. But okay. Lulu Merle Johnson was born in nineteen oh seven in a small town in, in a small town called Gravity in southwest Ivory. In, in, in southwestern Iowa, and she was one of fourteen black women at the university, and she completed her, her bachelor's and master's degree there in the nineteen thirties in the PhD in nineteen forty one. So you should go look that up. You know that's something that no one talks about, or we don't we you know we don't have discussions about that. You know, but that's something. And I uh, uh, Johnson County recently changed the name to. You know, Johnson County under this old guy, but now it's named after this person. You know, the first black woman, you know, in Iowa to get a PhD and one of the few black women to get a PhD in Iowa. So, you know, we, you know, you know, that's truths and stuff we need to talk about. So with that idea. And we do have uh, Commissioner Gothwa's hand raised and then Commissioner Johnson again after that. Yeah, thank you, Sikawis, for bringing that, this emotional and controversial agenda to our discussion, tonight, to our meeting tonight. And uh, as far as setting up a sub subcommittee, yeah, um, 
um, we can do that or it can go to the education subcommittee because those are some of the topics that were going to come under that because even before tier before pre-trc in our listening posts that's something i already put that out there that there's a lot of american history that is not in our curriculum so it could come under that although that would be covering the uh more the formal education but then we can decide whether we are still going to have another subcommittee because it's not just educating our children all the way from pre-k uh but also our our communities then the other thing i wanted to add um as far as uh this is as concerned the BIPOC communities, we we just don't, I think we have been oppressed for so long, we don't realize our power, or probably it could either be that or, or an internalizing all that. But as, as we move on and we talk of the government that we have that continues to be very, very blatantly oppressive, we, we have to let ourselves know and remind ourselves that uh, already the things I, Commissioner Traore, you confessed about even uh, thinking ahead will just be, we are placed, the commission is placed in a very good place as the change of government is going to occur. And already, even already, the person who has already said they're vying for governorship we already have time to look into them and also so as to get and direct and put concert our power because we are powerful we just don't either seem to know it so this commission and thank you commissioner Sipawis again for bringing this here right at the beginning so that we can harness our power and concert it and use it uh, somebody may accuse some of us of being political but then again you accused of being political by somebody who's always used that pull of the that political to oppress you so yeah we do have the power to change things and make things better for ourselves easy of course not it isn't painful of course it is losses of course yeah so yes we do have that power and uh, we can continue planning on how to go about it. With that, I yield. I like the idea of uh, the education uh, committee, but I also it also made me realize that uh, lobbying against uh, shitty legislation is a job in and of itself. So, a political engagement uh, committee might be um necessary um not that i don't want to say that it isn't uh, also very much in the realm of education uh but uh maybe expanding the education committee to, or you know making a political engagement committee and then adding a portion of education into it. i'm just i'm just giving some thoughts on that and thank you so much uh uh i'm sorry uh commissioner uh Gathua. Gathua? I've never actually said your name, so am I saying it right? Yes. Thank you. I, uh, yeah. I'm very wary of that uh, coming from the indigenous community, so I always want to do my best. Um, and so, yeah, I want to say thank you for um, the nod. I feel like Johnson County has a lot of potential to be shining examples of what we should do and how we should be as not just here, but everywhere. And one of the things that I really did appreciate about even the, uh, the people's TRC is the people that came out. And I feel like the people that came out, it was, it was a very, it was a mixed group of people. And I think that's our power. That's our strength is for us to work together to move forward and wipe out all of this. 
it's clear that on a lot of mul multiple different sides that we all want to move forward. We have things that are in the way, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I was so confused about why are we not, why are we not all as a unit pushing forward on this rather than breaking off into subgroups? I mean, I, I, I can understand that to a certain degree, but at the same time, there's strength in numbers, period. And everybody, if, you're, if you feel as though something is wrong, bring your voice forward, bring it forward, and then we all push it forward together and then change it. I, I, I just see Johnson County, I see Iowa City as being better than what we used to be, no matter what. Any issues that we might've had the day before, or three days before, whatever, we need to keep pushing forward. We will have our hiccups, but at the same time, it's it's progress only makes things better for everybody. That's all there is to it. So yeah, I yeah, I would like to push forward this as much as possible as well. Glad you said it that way. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm gonna jump in real quick. Um, I don't wanna say this cause it's gonna be controversial if I say it, but you know, pretty much, most people know and most people have knowledge who's the original man of this earth. So yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say as well. Um, yeah, I'm glad you said it that way in terms of uh uh all working together. So I would still like to work with the, alongside the people's TRC. I do feel like that could that barrier could be broken. Uh, at some point, but just uh, refocusing on on these current things that we have in terms of the South District and everything. Um, so uh, there is the final diversity market this weekend. So I know for a fact I will be there. Um, missed the last two, but yeah, other than that, I have made the other ones. I will definitely be at this one. And I know I'll be bringing some money as well to spend at it because it's really hard not to shop while you're there. Some very talented individuals there, some great food as well. And I really like to uh, talk to the business owners there as well of how they think we can support them going forward. Just to let everyone know as well, the South District Neighborhood Association is also looking to pass a SMID. So if you guys know what the downtown Iowa City Business District is or uh, the New Bohemian Collaborative in uh, Cedar Rapids, so those are also SMIDs. So essentially what those are is uh, small sections that community or certain district, um, people pay in higher property taxes to so then that money can be used directly within uh, that area of town on any projects that are needed to, you know, shore up, um, to shore up uh, public services or to shore, shore up some kind of uh, business development fund or community development fund. So they're looking to get something like that going for the South District Neighborhood Association. And um, I just really think that that's something that would will really be key moving forward because based on what I heard at the city council meeting when I went to it on Tuesday, it's gonna be a long road forward getting them to truly value the South District. And I know it's not something we all wanna hear, but all I kept hearing was stuff about how if we do this cost, if we do this cost, if we do this cost, and unfortunately didn't get the opportunity to speak again on it, but it's really sad to hear all, all this money, they'll say of 150K to this consultant, 200K to this, to this consultant for this study, this, this, and that. And then I say something simple, such as there's an empty lot right next to Dream City. It's like, if you want to talk about doing your consultants, this, this, and this, like, how about you just build the rec center right there? Because we know the kids need it. We know it's needed in that community. And, and then it's met with, Oh, uh, but yeah, but we know building a new facility, it's going to cost this much, it's going to do this. And what I wanted to talk about was when you increase property values, you one, increase the amount of property taxes that are being paid, which also helps the city budget. But two as well, I mean, I don't hear much in the way of, but what about the budget when we keep giving all these business owners tax breaks and these all these developers tax breaks? So I just wanted to say that on record right here now, since I didn't get the opportunity to on, on Tuesday. But I am going to continue pushing them on that stuff because uh, some of the things I heard on Tuesday, I was just is honestly just ridiculous how we could just throw our throw around these six figure numbers like it's nothing on just studies 
for consultants, but we can't even take some time to pay some people to go into communities to ask them about how they want millions of dollars to be spent from the American Rescue Plan, and we act like it's impossible or it's hard to figure out why we're not getting people's input. But that's all I have to say on that. Yield the floor. Awesome. Okay, so with me being a South District resident and the person that lives in the South District and contributes to the South District and helps the South District out a lot, we are one of the most ignored neighborhoods in Iowa City. Um, lots of, you know, we don't have um, all the places that they have downtown. They have a bunch of restaurants and businesses. The South Dish doesn't have that stuff. You know, we got corporate places and some of the places, um, unfortunately, um, they decided that they, they didn't want to sign up for the SMID, that the thing we worked on for a long time and tried to get them to sign up for them. So it's kind of the corporate business like Casey's and Hy-Vee and things like that. Um, so I thank Muhammad for talking about the South District because um, we, this neighborhood is, the neighborhood that we live in, um, it is the most culturally diverse neighborhood that we have in Iowa City. Um, my next door neighbors are, you know, different, you know, they, 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 you know, they, but they're not white people, you know, but, you know, down the street, it's a large community of African people down, down the street from me. So I appreciate Muhammad bringing that up. And I wish we could talk about more about the South District because most of the shootings and things that happen and things that happen, I would say some stuff happens downtown. Yeah, of course. But most of the things that happen, they happen in the South District. And with that, I yield. I feel like we shouldn't stop talking about the South District until we have change, period. We, we, we need to just keep pushing forward. And if we, if there's a problem and there's, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm in, this, I love the South District myself. I, I mean, it's, everybody in here has been really good people and there, there's no reason why we should be ignored over in the South District at all. And, uh, whatever we can do better for our community around here, we, we should. Uh, there's no there's just no other way of putting it uh we're, we're already the city's growing as we speak and we know where we need to start making more progress so yeah we need to talk about it more don't stop that's all i just want to add as well it's like i know there are other areas of the city such as you know the pheasant ridge neighborhood area um that that also needs some assistance in I know they have a large immigrant community as well, and I'm not overlooking them by any means, but it's just when also looking at the amenities that are there compared to the South District, West High being so close, university bus lines being right there on top of city bus lines, and then how close it is to the Coralville Strip, uh, all the current development that they have going on as well, them having like Fairway right there, Heartland, uh, I believe a Hardig drug right there and, and all these things, whereas when I look at the South District, it's lose, losing grocery stores, more liquor stores coming in. And they keep asking about like why these situations keep happening in the South District. It's like you are literally inviting it in by what you're doing with the businesses there. So it's just baffling to me once again how we give power to all these people that say that they're so wise and know this, this, and this. But these things are just staring them straight in the face. And they just won't sit there and just get a clue and actually realize, yeah, if I replace a bunch of grocery stores with liquor stores and then put mental health facilities and substance abuse facilities right there, I'm probably going to have an issue. I, I would like to just add that um, starting with the South District Neighborhood Association and like the South uh, East area of Iowa is a fantastic start and nobody should have to feel overwhelmed to have to do everything at once. Uh, we have a huge task in front of us and um, we have like huge allies there. And this, this district has been uh, being built up for a while. And so we can do some really like really strategic great things there and then use that as an example moving forward uh, and tackle all of Iowa City and hopefully partner with the city of Coralville to do the same thing. Cause as we all know, there are lots of uh, relatives living there too. 
and then um, you know keep keep doing what we're doing and be shining examples of how to uh, you know deal with uh, recon you know uh, healing and reparations. Thank you. Well, I would um, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate what you said. Um, being a South District resident, um, some in the South District things haven't changed since the pandemic. Uh, um, you can. You know, if you don't get gas in the South District past 10 p.m., you have to drive out of the South District to go get gas because all the stores close. You can't, it's nothing to do, you know, in the South District. You know, the downtown district is taken care of way better than the South District is. And the South District is a well trafficked neighborhood because in the South District, um, we have Amazon in the South District. We have a lot of things in the South District that that's over in our area, but it's neglected, you know? So I'm glad we can have the conversation about the South District and with that I yield. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to add on this topic before commission announcements? Okay. Um, so commission announcements, just wanna say, I thought this was a really productive meeting and really like the progress we're making and really like how we're starting to come together and excited to keep working with you all going forward. Um, am I allowed to announce something that my own organization has done? I yeah. think I asked that last time, but it was in a different context. So I wanted to just be sure. Okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, this is actually a past announcement, but if anybody's interested in learning more about uh, the ban on critical race theory and um, the uh, effort to abolish monuments uh, to white supremacy, uh, please go to Great Plains Action Society Facebook page and look at our past events uh, on July 4th. Um, just like the past, uh, like just like last year, and then the, like many other like times in the past, we've uh, been at the Capitol. We were there again uh, to um, uh, oppose uh, July Fourth uh, because uh, we are not um, savages, as is said uh, <laughs> in government documents. And uh, is it five eighths? or like five eighths of, no, five eighths of a human? No, what is it um, for slaves in the South? It was three eighths or three fifths or yes. some, three what? Three, three fifths. fifths. Three fifths, thank you. So we are considered savages and uh, black folks are considered uh, three fifths of a human. And so um, why would we celebrate July 4th? And so um, in, in celebration of not celebrating uh, July 4th, we celebrate uh, us as BIPOC folks in this state. Uh, and then we also oppose uh, monuments to white supremacy. And then this year had to add on uh, critical race theory, uh, plus the um, over 1500 children that have uh, been on, uh, uncovered, if you will, um, in Canada so far. And that is only, uh, seven of about 500 uh, boarding schools uh, throughout Canada and the US that have only been searched. So on July 1st, um, the ban on critical race theory went forth. And on that same day, uh, Canada was celebrating their day of liberation. They were celebrating Canada Day. And uh, millions of people around the world uh, marched and uh, stood up uh, and tried to cancel Canada Day for that reason. And so July 1st was a very uh, important day for indigenous peoples here uh, in Iowa and like across the world. And so please check out um, that event so you can like uh, watch the live feeds. They're not the best, but, uh, and just see what like amazing organizations across the state and Eastern Nebraska had to say about the ban on critical race theory and um, banning, uh, uh, you know, abolishing monuments to white supremacy in the state of Iowa. Thank you. Sorry, that was a long announcement, but there was a lot uh, to preface.
Okay. And I just want to say thank you again. Um, don't apologize for the length. I mean, time is used for giving the information out. So I did get some good notes on that as well. And I will definitely look into that. But if no one does have any other announcements, then I do want to hand it over to Stephanie for staff announcements. I don't have anything, but thank you. Okay. Um, well, with that, uh, thank you everyone for bearing with us today. I know it was a little longer, but very productive night. And um, well, with that, I'd say that the meeting is adjourned if we can get a roll call vote on that stuff. Uh, sure. Uh, Commissioner Ali? Yes. Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gathua? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Commissioner Sakawas? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a Bye. good night.